I'm Luisa Marquardt, I'm the chair of the School Library uh, Standing Committee of the Italian Library Association. And I'm particularly glad to uh, serve to help the uh, IFLA uh, School Library Section Standing Committee uh, having their it's a mid-year meeting. So uh, it was such a pleasure to um, get the uh, Italian uh, Library Association involved uh, in organizing also, also a professional development um, seminar, webinar, uh, and I'm particularly happy to present uh, uh, our warmest uh, greetings and welcome um, from Mm -hmm. All the the whole uh, Italian Library Association, its president Rosa Magliello, uh, the secretariat, the web, the Springer, uh, the web group, uh, the Springer group, uh, children's library section, uh, information literacy group, uh, professional development, uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia um, uh, regional section, and also, of course, uh, the school library section of the Italian Library Association. This meeting uh, is focusing on, on the dialogue between public libraries and school libraries. So uh, it's titled Public and School Library Cooperation in Italy for Quality Learning. Um, wants to underline uh, the strong need that uh, public libraries and school libraries uh, uh, for a, a fruitful, uh, effect, more effective collaboration between public libraries and school libraries, aiming at in enhancing uh, learning, enhancing uh, reading uh, literacy, media information literacy, uh, contributing to the achievement of the um, objective four of the uh, sustainable development agenda, the uh, uh, United Nations uh, Agenda 2030. Uh, 2030. Uh, and this meeting is uh, it's held in loving memory of our um, uh, dearest, uh, very talented. Uh, colleague Antonella Bicetti, who uh, passed uh, nine days ago. So it's a pleasure for me uh, to um, invite uh, Valérie Glass, the new chair. Um, she was very recently elected uh, as the new chair of the school library, uh, IFLA school library section standing committee and uh, um, uh, she's a professor of documentalist information uh, specialist and head of the CDI, uh, Center, the Documentation Information, Information Documentation Center at the um, uh, Cité Scolaire uh, Internationale uh, in Lyon, France. Uh, Valérie, uh, the micro is yours. Okay, thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Um, Buongiorno a tutti. Uh, I hope everyone is in good health. Uh, on behalf of this station, I present my greetings to all of the participants of this media meeting, which is all online. I thank Guisa Marker for having organized this meeting online and also to have prepared the physical meeting in case we could have it in Rome. Uh, so I'm going to present synthetically the FLA School Library section, its aims and works. So the section of uh, school libraries uh, concerns itself with the improvement and development of school libraries and resource centers worldwide, especially advocacy for the qualified and adequate staffing. Uh, it provides an international forum for exchanging ideas, experiences, results, uh, research with results and advocacy. Uh, the school library, IFLA school library section is represented by members from countries all around the world, like Japan, China, USA, France, Italy, Croatia, UK, Sweden, Norway, Canada, Netherlands, Germany, and Cyprus. Um, the, the member which contributes, contributes to the works of the section. Among it, members have the responsibility to organize sessions for IFLA conferences each year, producing guidelines, publications, and manifestos. 
This section also collaborates with, with the IASL, International Association of School Librarianship, for guidelines and publications. The last work uh, together with the IASL is the update of the School Libraries Manifesto, which was uh, dated from uh, 1999. And this uh, manifesto will be pu published very soon. Um, so this year, uh, the IFLA conference will be online from the uh, 70th to the 90th of August 2021. And the school library section will probably, to be confirmed soon, organize an online session. So we invite you to join us in August. And until then, I wish you a pleasant morning enjoying online presentations about Italy. A presto. A bientôt. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Valerie. Now I'm presenting the, the greetings uh, from the Vice President of the International Association of School Librarianship, um, AASL, uh, Professor Albert Buchhurst. I'm sharing uh, a slide. Let me see. Just a moment. So, uh, Albert Buchhurst, uh, Professor uh, of Information Science uh, at the University of Pretoria, can be here. He lives in Brazil, uh, but he sent us um, a video message, uh, but uh, the audio uh, uh, quality, unfortunately, is not very good. So, But he was so kind to send us also the, this PowerPoint presentation. So I'm reading uh, his words. Um, Abba Buchhurst is a semi-retired information scientist, um, graduated at the University of Amsterdam, and then and and worked there as a professor and was a, attached to the Department of Science, uh, Information Science at the University of Pretoria, and is currently a research associate at, the, at that department. He is particularly um, engaged and involved both in uh, IFLA, uh, IASO, UNESCO, uh, ANSIL, uh, in many uh, school library, uh, library information literacy uh, groups. Uh, he says, wherever you are, bon dia, boa tarde, boa noite, bon good morning, good evening, good night from Brazil. Last February, when Luisa and I were discussing the planned mid-year meeting 2020 in April in Rome, uh, we both hoped that in two months the problems would be over and that we could, be, could have our meeting face-to-face -face as usual. And I happily booked a flight and a room. How wrong we were. Now, more than a year later, maybe the height of the pandemic is over in some areas, but all over the world we still have to live with different kinds of restrictions. Here in Brazil, I got two vaccinations of the Chinese uh, Sinovac, which is effective only for only 50%, so I still have to be very careful. The lockdowns in all forms over the whole world uh, have an enormous effect um, on every part of human activity. It does influence the ways we carry out our daily and professional activities, so also for the world of conferences in general and for the school library world, virtual has become a new standard expression when we are talking about meetings. In the Dutch language, we have a saying about wearing different hats, which means to have different roles or tasks to perform. As for the school library's world, I have several hats. I'm the IFLA School Library Section Information Coordinator, the IFLA Vice President in Association Relations, member of the ISL IFLA Joint Committee, 
and coordinator of Hensel, the European Network for School Libraries and Information Literacy. Via the different types of membership, uh, many school librarians are connected to this world, which constitutes a platform for discussion, exchange of ideas, options for questions and answers. And it's wonderful to see how school librarians over the whole world have been adapting the new situation using all kinds of digital technologies and have been sharing their solutions on the various platforms. There is much talking about going back to normal. I don't like the expression going back very much. You mustn't go back. You must go forward um, using the new insights that were learned by solving problems. For now, Luisa managed again to compile a very interesting program around our media meeting, and I thank her very much for her on ongoing activities. Although we are supposed to be able to communicate and see each other during this media meeting, uh, I'll miss meeting you all in person and hope uh, that we'll be able to do that again in 2022. Uh, when we will we'll have our next media meeting. I hope you will all enjoy this meeting. Ciao. So, uh, thank you to Professor Albert Bukers for his kind message. In the round table that will be held um, this evening at 6 p.m., uh, the president of the IASL, um, Cathy Mank, uh, with Valerie Glass, uh, will join us also uh, in, in that uh, round table. So it, it would be uh, good to hear also from the uh, IASL president uh, news about the uh, 50th uh, anniversary. <laughs> and, and so now we go on uh, with our uh, with our program. Please let me mm, let me share show and share. <laughs> so in the uh, the team of public uh, and school library cooperation uh, couldn't be uh, explored uh, without the very uh, enthusiastic, effective, uh, and precious collaboration uh, of different uh, sectors, branches of the Italian Library Association. So I want to thank again once more. Uh, my colleagues uh, within the association in a very short time uh, were able to uh, um, collaborate with the, the proposal to join our forces uh, for this uh, for this meeting. Uh, the program is also uh, is fully endorsed by the Italian Library Association, of course, but uh, is also a part of the. Uh, national uh, reading campaign, Il Maggio dei Libri, uh, uh, the month uh, May, uh, uh, the month of books, uh, which is a national campaign, uh, reading promotion uh, campaign uh, promoted by the CEPEL, Centro per il Libro e la Lettura, uh, the National uh, uh, Center for Book and Reading of the Minister, uh, Minister of Culture, uh, Cultural Heritage. Um, uh, as I said, uh, uh, we, missed, uh, we missed our uh, um, very talented and enthusiastic colleague, who's Antonella Bichetti, who spent, uh, who dev devoted uh, has best um, her best uh, efforts uh, to strengthening uh, the links, uh, the cooperation, uh, both inside the school uh, uh, between uh, school libraries, school libraries and public libraries, um, and uh, she achieved very much, uh, so much in in a uh, too short life. 
uh, but one uh, thing, one dream uh, is uh, to be achieved. Uh, the um, uh, the book Voices from the Lockdown. So we are uh, uh, committed in uh, supporting uh, this fundraising uh, campaign to have uh, this amazing book with uh, voices from uh, 51 school libraries, uh, pupils, uh, students uh, who express their uh, feelings, emotions, fears, uh, dreams uh, during the lockdown. Uh, our program uh, um, is um, uh, organized in uh, three sessions. Uh, the first one uh, will explore the, some forms of uh, collaboration between public libraries and the school libraries, public libraries and school libraries in dialogue. So uh, we are going to have uh, three contributions, distributed library project uh, in Trieste, uh, with uh, Mavis Toffoletto and Simonetta Pasqualis, um, Biblioteca Sala Borsa uh, Ragazzi Virtual Tour um, uh, by Enrica Menardin, uh, public libraries and school libraries towards a long-lasting alliance, uh, Maria Spano Vangelis, and the second session uh, uh, will be focusing on education and research about reading information literacy with the uh, three contributions from the um, information literacy group, Sandra Migliore and uh, Maria Spano Vangelis, I will be speaking Maria Sp Spano Vangelis, uh, in a contribution about uh, information literacy, uh, education and training, both for students and teachers, uh, by Mathilde Fontanin, uh, take a walk in the third space, librarians as teachers uh, facing information literacy together, reading motivation by Beatrice Eliotteri, and the last se session will mm, will be presenting uh, some uh, new or renovated uh, reading and learning spaces, both from the children's library uh, viewpoint, uh, with an interesting video by uh, Milena Tancredi about the children's library, La Magna Capitana Children's Library. Mm. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll be providing a, an overview about um, school library spaces and uh, a, a three interesting videos uh, from a um, comprehensive school, uh, Malanga School Library by Mario Priore and two videos uh, uh, from the um, Massimo D'Azzaio Grammar School uh, whose school library, Leone, uh, named after uh, Leone Ginsburg, will be presented by um, a student. So, um, just um, let me uh, say, uh, sorry, let me say something about, uh, about our, our team, the, the theme we are exploring today. Sorry, the system is going a bit slow. Uh, oh, the the um, uh, the idea of uh, working uh, also in a very short time, uh, working at the um, uh, on the at the team of a, a team of a cooperation. Um, uh, was uh, the idea was born uh, reflecting on on the divisions of the inequalities of the um, the gap uh, that uh, that uh, has been um, in, um, increasing during the lockdown since the pandemic started. So we uh, now uh, are uh, uh, we are facing. Uh, so many challenges, uh, and uh, in, 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 about Italy, uh, the stats uh, um, underline how uh, the um, dropout, for, for instance, students' uh, dropout rate uh, is increasing. Uh, many schools uh, are still struggling in providing 
uh, regular uh, teaching activity uh, because of the um, te of technological problems and so on. So the uh, um, uh, the future. So uh, our uh, uncertain and and complex future, present and future time, uh, requires us to be uh, uh, more flexible, more, um, uh, more um, uh, prepared, uh, ready to, uh, to face new challenges. So, and libraries uh, can play a very relevant role uh, in enhancing uh, literacy, cohesion, um, the acquisition of uh, soft skills and new uh, competencies, uh, absolutely uh, necessary that are required from uh, by a, such a complex and uh, changing world. So the um, um, the aim of this uh, uh, meeting is not uh, to go uh, deep. We don't have uh, much time to go deep in 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 each topics uh, that will be uh, presented uh, with um, um, data, uh, research, and findings, and so on uh, in the proceedings. But in uh, this morning, we want to. Um, just uh, uh, present an idea of what's going on uh, uh, both in public libraries, children's libraries, and school libraries uh, cooperating. Um, for our international uh, audience, um, um, it's important to know that uh, the school librarian's uh, job position in Italy uh, doesn't exist. Uh, nevertheless, uh, except for the uh, autonomous province of Bolzano, Bozen, in the German-speaking area, uh, South Tyrol, um, the uh, the fullness, the lack of a, the school librarian's information specialist job position uh, is particularly hard and the affects um, the the development of school libraries. Nevertheless, uh, school libraries are mentioned in, um, in many, many uh, documents, uh, institutional documents, I mean, some uh, round letters, uh, programs, uh, actions, for instance, uh, the uh, recent uh, um, action uh, number uh, 40, uh, number 24, uh, for innovative school libraries within the uh, digital school plan uh, is um, um, specifically uh, addressed to uh, the announcement, uh, the improvement of uh, school libraries, uh, both for, mm, uh, let me say, traditional reading, but also uh, enhanced reading uh, using digital tools, media, and so on. So, uh, but uh, um, uh, the lack of uh, uh, recognized professionals uh, is uh, a problem also in terms of sustainability, sustainable, uh, sustainable uh, development of the school library, because you may invest uh, very much in the school library uh, and the year, uh, two years later, uh, it could be just a, a locked uh, room. So uh, the uh, efforts uh, uh, are still to be uh, uh, done in the in this field. And uh, nevertheless, uh, the problematic situation, uh, we have very interesting, um, uh, very interesting experiences. For instance, uh, the national coordination of school library networks. There are many networks, school library networks, uh, who are very dynamic and they um, collaborate with each other and also with pub public libraries and associations and other uh, agencies and entities uh, 
um, uh, there are also some interesting experiences in uh, resource sharing and so on. So uh, now uh, we can uh, go on with our program and the, um, I'm introducing uh, I'm in introducing, uh, in, in, sorry, introducing um, Simonetta Pasqualis, um, who uh, will be speaking about an, an interesting uh, project um, that is um, uh, uh, carried um, carried on by the by Trieste um, City Council. Uh, her colleague Mavis Tofoletto and uh, Simonetta uh, are fully involved uh, and enthusiastically involved in this project. So, uh, Simonetta, please, uh, the mic is yours. Uh, the, the, the audio, please turn, turn on the micro. Uh, Simonetta, you, you have to turn on your microphone. Below, below the screen. Okay. Sorry, we cannot hear you. Uh, we may go on with um, uh, Biblioteca Sala Borsa Ragazzi virtual tour. And then we go back to Simonetta. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Enrica Menardin. Okay. Uh, Enrica Menardin. Uh, um, we'll be presenting uh, Biblioteca Sala Borsa Ragazzi. Uh, Biblioteca Sala Borsa is an amazing uh, library, public library at the very heart um, of Bologna. Um, it, it, it is located in, a, in the former stock exchange building, uh, an amazing architecture that was uh, converted into public library services and the uh, children's library is particularly dynamic um, and works, of course, with uh, uh, kindergartens, uh, schools, and uh, Enrica Menabin uh, will, uh, will show us uh, Biblioteca Sala Borsa Ragazzi. Good morning, my name is Erika Menarbin and I'm going to take you on a virtual tour of Sala Borsa Children's Library. Sala Borsa is a contemporary public library realized in an ancient building, just in the heart of Bologna. In the past, this building has been many different things, a Roman civil basilica, a botanical garden, a commercial exchange hall, a bank. Since 2001, it is Bologna's central public library. The central hall is architecturally conceived as a square, a cultural square. Biblioteca Sala Borsa Ragazzi is the part of the library for children and teens from 0 to 16 years old, and for parents, families and adults involved in their education. In the pre-COVID times, every year more than 300,000 people enter Biblioteca Sala Borsa Ragazzi. We had more than 12,000 patrons that made about 130,000 loans. Our collection includes almost 85,000 items, about 70,000 books and more than 10,000 DVDs. Unfortunately, at the moment, the library cannot normally welcome its users, 
due to the anti-COVID rules. It is possible to enter the library booking the access in advance. Patrons can choose books from the shelves and borrow them, but it's not possible to stay in the library rooms to read or study. So you will see the room's arrangement is not the usual one. Our library is divided into four parts. Let's start with Sala Bebe. Sala Bebe is the part of the library for babies and toddlers. It was created in 2008 thanks to a complete restyling of the library. Architects, together with a group of librarians and a group of parents, developed a project according to a participatory plan. Now, babies and toddlers can't enter the room because of anti-COVID rules, but normally it is important to keep the floor clean because babies crawl. So we ask people to put the blue plastic bags sì, sì. Uh, on their shoes if they want to enter the room. We offer services for parents, a warmer for children bottles, a feeding eye chair, a special chair and a pillow for breastfeeding, a toilet with baby changing table. Here babies, toddlers and their families can find books with images, tactile books, books with flaps and other elements that permit to discovering and playing, first short stories and nursery rhymes. There are also magazines and books for parents and in general for adults who are interested in puriculture, on being a parent, on child needs and so on. Biblioteca Sala Borsa Ragazzi participates and coordinates in the city of Bologna the national project Nati per Leggere that promotes the reading culture to children from their birth to six years. It realizes activities of promotion of reading culture in collaboration with pediatricians in the pediatric divisions of health clinics in Bologna. Families can find books in the main European languages, but also in non-European languages. It is very important for us to promote multilingual reading and cosmopolitanism in our younger citizens. We offer books in almost 100 languages, also thanks to the donation of Bologna Ragazzi Awards. We also offer activities such as bilingual and multilingual story time to involve all parents to share their mother tongues and to give value to all languages spoken in our town. Other activities we usually offer are story time, music activities, the treasure basket and Spazio Mamma where midwives and nurses meet mothers of newborn to talk about breastfeeding, childcare, vaccinations and to provide information on early childhood services and opportunities. Women can get to know each other and exchange their experiences. This is Sala Bambini, the part of the library for children from 3 to 6 years old. Books are divided according to their general topic fairy tales, nursery rhymes, nature, silent books. We also offer books in braille, tactile books, and books in widget symbols in order to facilitate reading for young people with disabilities. Before COVID, we usually offered two iPads with a selection of apps for children to explore the best digital opportunities. Sala Borsa Ragazzi Library monthly promotes the best new publications and we monthly meet other librarians, teachers and educators working in Bologna libraries kindergarten and preschools to discuss together about the best new publication for children. It's an important professional training opportunity for everybody working with children and books. The activities we usually offer are story time, we have a group of volunteer readers that we train constantly and we organize story times in collaboration with the Children's Theatre of Bologna. 
workshops in collaboration with associations and we cooperate with the Municipal Education Department for projects involving kindergarten and preschools to promote reading culture. Last year, for example, we realized the project Leggere Appartenenze that aimed to make the practice of reading aloud with children a habit in all families. The project, financed by the National Ch Center for Books and Reading, allowed the creation of libraries within 25 educational services, the training of operators, the implementation of projects which, starting from educational and library services, involve parents in giving value to everyday reading in families. We move to another room, Sala del Lettino. Here you can find a small bed to read behind a curtain. And here you can find picture books in all languages. As I told you, we work a lot on mother tongues. We also cooperate with associations that organize courses to teach to, teach to second generation children the family mother tongue. The lessons are usually held at Zanarelli Intercultural Center, so we manage to leave a part of our books in foreign languages at the mother tongue schools so that children and families can read and borrow books. This is the part of the library for boys and girls from 7 to 12 years old. You can find books in many languages, traditional fairy tales, comics, novels, poetry, audiobooks. Non-fiction books that are shelves according to the Dewey Decimal System. Before Covid, every morning we had activities for school classes, guided visits, workshops. This year, unfortunately, it was impossible to work with schools in the library, so we proposed activities that teachers could do at school. For example, for the primary schools, we proposed an activity to bring in the classrooms the pleasure and benefits of reading aloud. We delivered to teachers books they could read aloud to students throughout the years and books that girls and boys could borrow and read on their own at home. Each teacher had a meeting with a librarian to structure the progress of the activity. Every year in June, at the end of the school year, we realize and promote in all schools of Bologna book lists of reading proposals for the summer. Another important activity for boys and girls is the reading group, Avamposto di Lettura. Unfortunately, this year we had to move the meetings online, but most of our passionate young readers kept on meeting online every month to discuss about books and also to meet online some of their favorite authors. For example, last month they met a young Italian comics author, Lorenzo Ghetti. Sala Adolescenti is the part of the library for teenagers and young adults. We promote for them Sanadu project. It's a reading national project run by the cultural association Hamelin. It is widespread in many Italian libraries and schools and has won several awards. It involves students in cultural path based on books, comics, songs and films and it ends with a great party. All the classes that participated during the year are invited to meeting to a meeting with some of the writers of the most loved books. But the main project we bring on with teenagers is Officina Adolescenti. 
Officina Adolescenti aims at enhancing and supporting youth activism and expression. The project is run by an educational team and involves directly young people in order to learn about their needs and desires. And so enables, in collaboration with our librarians, initiatives and activities that respond to current forms of cultural expression. Over the past years, Officina Adolescenti has run workshops involving hundreds of boys and girls. For example, street art and writing, hip-hop, breakdance. We also offer workstations for video making, music productions, gaming consoles, and since four years we offer OR records, where teenagers can record music tracks. Here ends our virtual tour. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that we can meet again soon in the real library. Goodbye! So thank you so much to Enrica Menarbin and the staff of the of Biblioteca Sala Borsa Ragazzi, Sala Borsa Ragazzi, Sala Borsa Children's Library. Um, the video was purposely made for this uh, event, uh, and the um, contribution, uh, the written contribution, of course, will go deeper uh, in the. Um, public library and school library cooperation. Um, Enrica uh, mentioned the Xanadu project, uh, which is well known among um, uh, teenagers. So uh, we will have a, a further opportunities to uh, go deeper in this project. Now we try again to have um, uh, to to, <laughs> to hear, we are trying to hear. Um, Simonetta Pasqualis, uh, who, uh, who is presenting uh, a contribution about books in unusual places, namely the Distributed Library Project. La Biblioteca Diffusa, Distributed Library, Diffuse Library, is an interesting project in Trieste, uh, which involves uh, many different agencies, public libraries, school libraries, associations, and many other uh, um, agencies and entities. Please, uh, Simonetta, uh, the micro is yours. Simonetta is an active member of a, a very active member of Italian Library Association and also IFLA delegate. So uh, it's a pleasure to uh, have her with us. Thank you so much, Simonetta. No, we can't hear you, unfortunately. Simonetta, we um, we can't hear you. So we'll, uh, we are going <laughs> once more with the first, uh, first uh, contribution by Maria Spanovangelis, uh, primary school teachers and uh, teacher librarian, uh, historian, and also a very active member of the Friuli Venezia Giulia uh, regional section. Uh, involved in the study group on cooper library cooperation and also information literacy. So um, Maria will be speaking about public libraries and the school libraries towards a long-lasting alliance. Please, uh, Maria, the micro is yours. Thank you. Good morning. And uh, school library study group delegated me to greet you and to thank uh, Lisa McQuart for her kind invitation to this important meeting. So that's my first international experience. And now I'm so emotional 
that I need to apologize for my pronunciation mistakes and my reading the most of our slides. Oh, well, now I try to share. Just one moment, please. I I learned to do that. Um, well, oh my God! So uh, one once more. Sorry. Oh gosh. I'm a little. Let me know when it will be okay, because. I uh, had to do that before. Luisa, tell me, can you see? Mm. Can you see it? No, not yet. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Oh, gosh. Sorry. I try again. Oh, my. So, so difficult. Um, well, now this one is easy. Really this sometimes okay. Sorry again. And now. Otherwise, it doesn't matter if we no. cannot see it. Uh, Luisa? Uh, well, no. Uh, okay. No. Yes. Yeah? Oh, good. Very good. Yeah. So, oh, well. Oh, well. Going to the beginning. Oh, my God. So, yes. Well, um, Let's start. So, currently, we are four librarians and two school libraries teachers. And our group was set up in, in 2014 by a regional guide committee linked to the region Friuli, Venezia Giulia. You, so, you can see the geographic position, but I'm going to tell you later why we would like to add this detail, this specific detail. So you can see that uh, our uh, regional committee operates in a region uh, that is the most northeastern region in northern Italy, close to Austrian and Slovenian borders. Well, so, uh, in the 2014, uh, Chair I decided it was important a new special interest group, uh, so our school library study group. Uh, Chair I was and is very proactive, not only to promote librarians' professional training, but also to support many various initiatives, events, all of them dealing with reading, publishing books, laboratories, children, young people, and adults, and also to cooperate with public and private associations and organizations. Before 2014, Cooperativa Damaca was a private association and chair began a joint venture in order to develop a regional project named Crescere Leggendo, Growing Up re Through Reading, as an ideal connection to two other projects, Born to Read, Age the Six National Project, IVE National Project, and Youngster, Age 13-18, Damatra Project. The new project was open to the schools, not only to the Bob Lake libraries, and was intended also as an another step to promote the value of the school libraries. Well, so, but why did Chair create a specific group if there was such a positive regional framework? There are many reasons. And one of them is the most problematic 
and Luisa told you before. So in Italy, we can find well-organized libraries, well-trained teachers, teachers working hard in order to promote reading and information literacy. But Italian education laws, except in South Tyrol, don't provide a legal status to the school librarian's role. So many teachers must work as full-time teachers and as school librarians if they want to make the school library be a living and useful place. And only few of them are full-time school librarians. But all of them need training, support, sharing experiences, and IBE needs knowing them and their problems to work together toward the school librarian's recognition, but also to, to know strengths weaknesses and everything useful. In general, that's why Cher decided that kind of idea. And our group would be composed by members with a school background and others with a librarian one. So, from the beginning, school library study group tried to do many, many tasks. We had uh, support regional teachers in schools, compile a list of the regional school libraries, and they contact teachers' names, promote congresses and conferences, create information to regional teachers and schools, provide training, and also be part of IBE and IBE National School Libraries Committee actions and then focusy to support the school libraries meet teachers, head teachers, regional members of the local government, and to create alliances and contacts with all the interested stakeholders. We are honest and pragmatic. It wasn't easy and it isn't easy to do everything. But the positive thing is that we we went on, we stopped, we went on again, we stopped, but we never gave up. So we uh, would like to show you we show you what you did in the past and what we are doing. But now, before, before going on, I would like to tell you why we showed our position at the beginning. Northern East, Northeastern borders were a critical zone and the two world wars caused many troubles and sorrows and cruelties and not only because of the war in itself but also because in Friuli and in the Trieste there were and there are Slovenian minorities and in Slovenia and Croatia, Italian minorities. So you can understand, you can well understand what it did mean and what it does mean in the past and sometimes, unfortunately, unlucky in the present. One of our members, Miriam Scrabo, representative of Gorizia Librarian System, was the first librarian able to connect libraries abroad, beginning with the school libraries of the Italian minority of those nations. But next, 
uh, step was also including um, Slovenian and Croatian uh, public life bodies as well. Since many years of my comprehensive school in Triestine has been keeping in touch with some Slovenian schools and we joined Gorizia Library System in order to give more opportunities to the different communities, um, Italian and Slovenian and Croatian, for families, children, teachers, sharing data, OPAC information, while training when it will be possible and interlibrary loan. So we could imagine it as a small step towards cooperation and overcoming the past sorrows. So well, now it's time um, to have a look not to the past, you can you can read the list, but what happened from the 22nd of July 2018. So we tried again a new registration using a questionnaire. Uh, unlucky, um, alas, it took ages before we could receive some answers. And uh, for some reason, it's why it's because we had uh, uh, problems, um, problems also with communication and sharing information through the um, uh, regional um, education minister office. It is always a problem. However, pandemic stopped the detailed investigation. We began planning in February 2020. However, data have been tabulated and we are going to investigate and publish them. But pandemic stopped not only the new registration, but also other activities until August, September, when we decided to try another way because we were inspired by other high special interest groups initiatives, online webinars. The focus um, would be the cooperation between public and school libraries in Turin and Sicilia, showing how they could manage it and choosing two representatives for each regional capital cities, Polizia, Pordenone, Udine, and uh, Trieste. So we planned the first cycle of webinars from the 11th of January till the 29th of March and uh, so each capital city uh, showed uh, um, its situation but after the first four webinars we plan for the webinars to interview the coordination group of, of school libraries networks and a kind of representative of the, national, of the regional education minister office. And it has been a big, big result. But I will explain later why. So, during the first webinars, Lisa Marquard, who was attending them, was invited to talk about IFA school libraries guidelines and so we could plan a further cycle until the 3rd of May. The three webinars focused on what I can do for school libraries. So we interviewed Lisa Marquardt about IFLA manifesto and guidelines. We interviewed Lisa Marquardt about DC the evolving concept of school library and its profession, international seminar by Lifla. And uh, for today, um, and today is at a round table with other five special interest groups linked to the school libraries and the coordination group of the school libraries networks. And plus 
on the 3rd of May, a webinar with Roma 3 University on updates about school libraries in France. Always thanks to Luisa. So, here we are. Uh, Janina Picano is our representative. We um, all have our addresses to keep in contact with us. We, we, if uh, you would like to do that. And um, why I um, why did I tell a big result that when uh, uh, we could have uh, a link uh, uh, with the representative of the regional uh, uh, education uh, um, minister office? Because you know we have uh, the national education minister, but. All uh, the members uh, um, dedicated to the school, school libraries are uh, located in the regional offices. And sometimes it's very difficult to keep in contact uh, with them because uh, the paradox is we have uh, we have them, we have uh, these officers, we have a uh, design employees. Uh, um interested in the school libraries but at the same time we have school libraries we have uh, teachers interested in school libraries but we haven't the legal statues so this is gap this is a paradox and so sometimes all these officers employees are um they are busy with uh, many other projects so sometimes it's uh, difficult uh, uh, for them uh, to spread information about the school libraries, etc. Uh, Miss Perrin um, has been a very kind, kind person, and she told us, um, "I'm, I'm, uh, I'm interested in helping you and cooperate with you." And so we are very, very. Uh, happy about that. So, I am at the end. Thank you for your attention. But we would like, me and the group, we would like to thank again, to thank very much Louisa Marquardt, who helped, supported, and invited us to this important meeting, and Donatella Lombello, who has always been supportive and helped us to share the webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria, for providing us with this interesting overview of the collaboration in your region, in your, your area. Um, Simonetta is still struggling with the audio, so I invite you to go on with the program uh, in the second session, reading information, literacy, education and research. Um, so you can present, uh, Maria, the um, Italian Library Association Information Literacy Group, um, uh, the contribution by Sandra Migliore, who can be he here with us, um, and you. Uh, will provide us with an interesting overview about the activities of the Information Literacy Group. Please, the mic is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, please have just uh, one moment. Uh, I prepared all the PowerPoint and everything, sorry. Yes, um, of course. Well. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh, gosh. Oh, I do again. So share, share Is it okay? Yes, it is. Is it loading? Oh, I learned. <laughs> to do this now, so sorry. Okay, so 
uh, just the last the last step okay so obviously um i'm dedicated also to greet you um by the information literacy group um the group was set up in 2011. Its main objective is to make the China librarians reflect about the importance of information literacy education and to make pragmatic and proactive actions in order to promote and spread it. With a positive dialogue inside all the contexts, we where we can increase, develop, and share an informative scale. School, university, jobs, different, not formal education agencies. 2014-2017, Clayt focused on the state of art of information literacy in Italy and on the proposal of new theoretical models and the writing on manifesto for information literacy, information literacy manifesto. 2017 2020, Clayt went on with advocacy actions, spreading and sharing the concept how important information literacy, literacy is for the lifelong learning, paying attention to the information literacy standards evolution. End 2019, Salib's proposal information literacy was translated in Italian. Just remember, information literacy is the ability to think critically and make a balanced uh, judgment about any information we find and use. It empowers us as citizens to develop informed views and to engage fully with society. Well, our, uh, our main action was the manifesto IBUS on information literacy, IBUS manifesto on information literacy. And it's a very, very strong, um, you see, uh, very, oh, very full, uh, very manifesto, full of details and uh, um, suggestions and ideas and whatever you want. It is, first of all, it is an open document that isn't just published or unchangeable. It defines information literacy considering the complexity of the informative system. It describes all its characteristics. It offers proposals in order to realize the best practices. And it explains how and why we all not only librarians or teachers or scholars cannot underestimate the influence of well-trained information literacy competencies in our lives as thinkers and as citizens. It defines the librarians and librarians' role in the complex informative ecosystem. And it underlines that now we must Pass from advocacy to active partnership and explains how and with whom. One of the partners and stakeholders we need to keep in touch obviously is school. So, Clay's strategic plan 2020 23 is publicizing the manifesto and translating it in English. We began doing that. Promoting international standards, monitoring information literacy activities, sharing positive practices, 
strew all over the territories. Defining a competences curriculum, cooperating with the university context. It is a consolidated uh, uh, task and that great had and being cooperative with other partners, both within the guide and outside. Defining a competences curriculum. So this girl is dealing with the specific GLEADS role to support schools. So we all know very well that schools are a strategic axis. And GLEADS is ready to support uh, school digital projects to train students and teachers as well to add value to libraries as information mediators. And our uh, National School Digital Plan, the National Education Minister, BNSD, is an opportunity that motivated our choice. And then to be involved in designing a school's curriculum to define informative and digital competencies from kindergartens to high schools, and then in capturing and giving value to the best school practices. Cooperation with the Ivory National School Libraries Committee is a fundamental and with projects as well, like a modern future education, and then to list the best practices useful in the university context. So why school? And Clit is really ready, always ready to do that and uh, to be in contact with support school. So many um, academic uh, university like Prarians uh, told us uh, as teachers, uh, when uh, students uh, uh, arrive at university, many times they show um, weaknesses uh, they they don't know um, how to behave uh, through the different uh, uh, the different resources uh, they could have, and you know as Tommaso Payano uh, says, Tommaso Payano is a very very um, good librarian and specialized in information literacy. They train it uh, many. Uh, teachers and the librarians as well. And in this last uh, uh, course I attended, um, he told us, "Okay, now uh, we we can uh, uh, we can uh, use a metaphor uh, to to call uh, uh, Google as an oracle. Yes, Delphos, the new, the modern Delphos oracle. And so for students." Uh, uh, also, when they are young, as well, so pupils and the primary school, Google is like an oracle. And when we cannot find anything in Google, and if, uh, nothing exists, uh, so it's it's terrible. And we uh, primary and high school teachers, we are uh, very sad about that because uh, we do a lot of work. Uh, not all of us, uh, I'm honest, not all of us, but. Uh, who uh, teaches, uh, who teach and who try to do that. Uh, it's so, so sad uh, knowing from the academic uh, librarians that uh, students, oh, I don't know what is that, what is this, I don't know, and they are not so well. It means, simply, it means that at currently we didn't uh, succeed in doing it uh, something inside, uh, like uh, opening and closing a window or a door. There are like um, you know, the um, um, what uh, what can I say? Uh, like the automatic pilot. Currently, for students and university students. Uh, uh, they have not uh, 
automatic parlor about information literacy. So that's why it is so important uh, working together and uh, um, and try uh, to work together. So here, here we are, here are the members, and so you can see the, our address to keep in contact with us. So thank you very much. Thank you for your kind attention. So much for this uh, interesting overview and information literacy, uh, information literacy education, media information literacy education, um, digital literacy, global competencies um, are fields where uh, the cooperation between school libraries, uh, public libraries, academic libraries. Um, can be very, very helpful, effective. Uh, so we need to find uh, further uh, ways of collaborating. Now, uh, I um, about information literacy. Um, uh, our colleague Mat Matilde Fontanin, uh, who has worked in university libraries since uh, 1995 and is currently writing her PhD thesis on the role of libraries and librarians in face of the digital revolution um, at Sapienza, the University of Rome, uh, is a member of the um, Italian Library Association Professional Development, uh, and um, she is a monitor, and she served two terms uh, in the IFLA uh, Professional Development, uh, and and uh, she is currently a consultant. Uh, her professional interests uh, range from user services to learning and e-learning. Uh, she has taught uh, since uh, 2000 uh, English for librarians uh, in a very nice and in, uh, involving way. Her background is foreign languages. And she also uh, has taught and teaches information media literacy uh, to students and teachers. Uh, her, mm, her, her speech, uh, um, her speech title is uh, "Take a Walk in the Third Space: Librarians and Teachers Facing Information Literacy Together." And her talk reflects on the lessons learned in two different learning experiences involving librarians and teachers. In both cases, Hulto's approach was at the basis. Based on uh, stimulating uh, the formulation of a personal, individual uh, research question as a response to an individual need, an individual personal need, and on the concept of the third space, the area uh, of thought between school and real life, it opened new perspectives, both with students and teachers, learning about information literacy with the goal of abandoning it in their discipline. The two courses uh, were extremely diverse. On the one hand, uh, uh, an embedded librarian in history and humanities class at high school, and on the other hand, a professional development course for teachers organized on a national scale, which was, was very good. This uh, mixed audience and, and, and cooperation. Moreover, uh, the first was a single experience, a limited in time, and the latter a series in the framework of the initiative uh, of the Italian Library Association on the way towards uh, its accreditation with the Ministry of Education in Italy as a provider of continuing education. Yet, it's possible to trace uh, to extract uh, some common trends. Kulto's approach had to be adapted to Italian context, uh, situation, of course, and was enriched by the mutual exchange between teachers and librarians, sharing knowledge, teaching me methods, uh, views, and competencies. The conclusion is that there is much more to gain from working together uh, than there is to lose even when school libraries are not in their best, uh, best shape. Moreover, in the light of the present pandemic, 
with most students learning from home, uh, the emotional sphere could be successfully activated uh, to fight infodemia. Now, uh, the micro is um, uh, Mathilde Fontanin. Uh, she can be here in presence, but we have a uh, video speech, video recording. Good morning, everyone. Good morning in Italy. It's a pleasure being here. I'm sorry not to be able to be there online, but thank you for the invitation. I would like to tell you a story which has got to do with librarians and teachers together trying to face the issues of information literacy. And since this story takes place in Italy, I'll give a very short overview, which is really not my place. There are more qualified colleagues here who know the situation better than I do. But it's just to put things in context. I would like to say that in Italy, school library is not established by statute. Theory says it is important, but the fact is that it's not found everywhere, that they are not necessarily librarians assigned to that. It's normally more often run by volunteers. Though in the past years, it has increased the r level of its digital collections. Um, well, mm, the story I'm going to tell you regards a workshop I was involved in in 2018. In a class of 15-year-olds, the focus was to teach them how to think critically in the face of disinformation, fake news. It was within the um, history, Italian language and literature, let's say the humanities class. The workshop was um, ruled, let's say, by the teachings of uh, Carol Coulthard. Um in her model, teaching information literacy is a process which lasts along the whole school year, which involves teachers, librarians, experts, and um, builds the skills in students and learners through a constructivist approach. Mm, teachers, experts, librarians help students overcome their mm, faults, let's say, their, their weaknesses uh, through the zone of uh, proximal development underlined by Vygotsky. And what's interesting, what interested me most in this volume, in this model, was that it insisted on feelings. Feelings are also what happens uh, when the third space is activated. The third space is not a physical space. It's a space in the mind of the learner where the student's word meets the curriculum. Extracurricular knowledge is used to make sense and add meaning to what is discussed in class. In order to do that, we started with a picture, an old-fashioned nine keys phone. We started with the one of the Harvard thinking routines. We showed this picture to students and asked them to see them. What do you see? What do you think? What do you wonder? We did the same afterwards with a smartphone. And we had a very funny debate on the supporters of one system versus the other, etc. So the atmosphere was immediately very warm because we actually went to touch something they all had in their pockets, which is actually something outside class. But this was just a pretext, let's say a warm up, because what we really wanted to discuss was Colton. So Colton is in all cell phones, in all um, elect in all uh, devices. So, and it is extracted in Congo. Uh, you might have heard about how it is extracted, the exploitation of people, of territory, etc. It's quite a, a, an issue. And therefore, uh, we introduced this topic um, through, uh, and then we went through an immersion phase, immerse phase. We used, for example, a video uh, from the National Science News. It's quite old, but and it's very short and very factual. And then students were given a series of other materials. Then we went through the other phases of the project. 
Uh, of course, there were lessons, say lectures from the librarian where I explained uh, information and its nature. Uh, what kind of information are is in library catalogs, what's in digital libraries, what digital libraries are available, why and when to go to official sources and what official sources. Then we showed press and videos. Uh, we explained fact-checking, websites, what they do. Uh, we discussed information ethics, um, how to not only find, evaluate, but also how to use and reuse information found, images, copyright, etc. After that, students were led through a series of processes to find out their, to discuss their uh, topics, to find out a research question. And various research questions emerged, which we could mm, collect in five different areas, uh, human rights, and international relations, some wonder why the international politics doesn't do anything for people who are exploited. Alternative technology, technological solutions, uh, the laws of international trade and sustainable developments. Every student was had, had different views, but they were gathered in five groups. Well, I don't want to tell the whole story of the project. In the end, the students gave their presentations and did a school work. Uh, they worked on Moodle. Uh, we met three times and it was quite a long and interesting experience. But I would like to stop a minute and reflect on the contributions I gave as a librarian, which was most of all explaining how information is organized. Uh, from reading Earls, which is also something they hadn't faced at school, explaining the catalogues, but not only that, explaining what sources are available. Let's speak also of governmental institutional sources, but uh, also digital libraries, and what kind of material they can find there, why and when they should go, and how to search in catalogues. I presented some evaluation tools, those that are well known from Big Six, the IFLA, how to spot fake news was discussed, etc. Mm, some organizational tools for their research, uh, the Stop and Jot Research Journal, which are tools that are part of uh, Cool Towns Toolkit. But also the teachers contributed, um, not only with teaching methods, because, for example, the Harvard thinking routine was something that came out of that specific school was working on it and the bring your own device was made possible by the school. Of course, I couldn't have asked students to use their devices to search, but it was very effective to use this um, approach in class. Uh, the Moodle uh, platform where we had the um, discussions of the workshop between one meeting and the other were very useful. Wi-Fi was of course made available by not only by the school but by the teacher because the teacher has got to authorize students. They are, don't normally have access to Wi-Fi. She also underlined every time um, when we found documents, she underlined uh, concepts related to the text, to the level of narrative of various texts and the formats the formats of narration, the article, etc. Which so they, she linked this to what they were actually discussing in school during the year, and so in a way she gave a sort of endorsement to the librarians' work, which is very important because otherwise students might think, after all, it's the teacher who does the marking, and let's face it, students are interested. We can speak about, okay, school is not about marks, but in the end it is about marks in a way. And so uh, the fact that this job was compulsory, it was marked by the teacher, really gave it, uh, contributed to keeping them interested, but they were really warm in their participation. So in the, in the end we can say with that experience we managed of making of these students who were a bit older than these kind of active learners. And this is why uh, when I was involved with um, a course for teachers, um, professional development course organized by the Library Association on how to bring information literacy to uh, their disciplinary class, um, 
I thought of the same approach. This course was on national level. There were various editions of the course in different regions and participants were both teachers and librarians. I was not involved as a teacher in all of these installments, but um, the, the goal of the course was basically to bring information literacy in class into their discipline and not only. The course had 10 face-to-face -face hours and 30 hours were on Moodle and um, it was a course organized under the umbrella of the Ministry of Education because the Library Association in Italy is working as an accreditation as a CPD provider with the Ministry. So it was quite official. Um, the contents, of course, had to be information literacy, the tools we all know. I uh, will not s speak about them too deeply, in, since the audience I have knows everything about them, but um, I will um, just underline a tool which might not be known to most of the audience because it's Italian. The um, uh, Library Association has a group, some of their representatives are here. They uh, prepared an information literacy manifesto, which is a kind of synthesis of many documents which, since of the, uh, which witnessed the discussion about information literacy at international and also national level and it was very useful as a tool to, to present a topic to teachers. Um, another thing which was underlined was uh, how uh, information literacy is uh, can have different levels. Digcom 2.1 is a framework by the European Union European Commission. They um, underline there are eight different proficiency levels in the uh, competencies for the digital citizen. Uh, there could be people who can hardly stay afloat and some others could be Mark Spitz. Uh, the important thing is that um, everyone, that nobody sinks. And at some level, every citizen in the European Union, this is what the framework says, must have a certain level of competencies. And when they describe these competencies, apart from the levels, uh, they describe them in areas. Uh, area one re regards information and data literacy, and they're explained in detail with uh, examples, practical examples that come from two scenarios, learning and employment scenario, to underline that this kind of competencies are part of life. So they must be mm, part of school. And so there again, uh, what I was going to to discuss with teachers again was something to do something between school and real life. And that's why I thought again of the activation of Cool Tau. And I thought, why not presenting teachers things the same way um, I had presented them to students? So we started with this picture and her thinking routine. They had to see, to say what they saw, what they thought, what they wondered. I must say uh, it was difficult to have more difficult to have teachers just report facts like students sitting rather than students bored <laughs> to become they tended to become slightly more judgmental than students but all in all the debate went well then we continued discussing this picture to discuss digital ex aspects of learning and then we went on with other materials for example this is a famous uh, composition school composition where um, young child, uh, May 2018, it was Louisiana, had published I Hate My Mom's Phone, etc. Mm, so the point was uh, teaching information literacy, but activating first their interest, uh, stimulating a debate, a more participative experience in the course. And in a way, it kind of worked uh, because the atmosphere was very uh, cooperative and um, it was able to face what are librarians and teachers complementary tasks attitudes to information. I would like to quote here Harry Potter uh, though um, when he finds a philosopher's stone uh, Dumbledore says uh, you see only one who wanted to find the stone 
find it but not use it would be able to get it and I like to think that um, this is more or less what the, the librarian does uh, the librarian finds information uh, doesn't want to use it the librarian is interested in how information is organized etc but well, of course we may want to use it but uh, normally the teacher is the one whose uh, task is to use information and especially to teach students how to use information so um, and this is what this was what emerged during the course how the two uh, approaches are different but the atmosphere as I said was very cooperative and so the results uh, were some project I would like to show you some highlights uh, some ideas um, well one of them was uh, what happens to my garbage um, it was uh, okay a project in the secondary school uh, for 12 year olds and um, the project um, refer regarded geography science and technology and citizenship etc because the teachers started uh, having these 12 year olds thinking of uh, where their garbage goes. She, they visited also the city council tax office to see and ask uh, to inquire how and why people pay taxes to have the garbage uh, disposed of and um, it was uh, very very interesting and involving she reported. Um, another project which treated a similar topic but from a different point of view was uh, regarded packaging this time it was a last year students at a high school an art school graphic designers uh, the teacher involved various experts experts in materials in technology also a clay maker pottery maker uh, one who's campaigning and proposing uh, clay instead of plastic more clay less plastic is the campaign and uh, so she the teacher was able to treat ecology citizenship uh, and uh, they visited the school library and uh, they also used the public library they had some workshops with uh, public librarians because the, the school does have a, a good school library but there is not um, regular librarian there they normally use students mm. another teacher had the idea of facing the issues of gambling disorder and she treated it with high school students in a school for accountants and so she chose the topic to treat statistics and probability and to teach them how to find the national statistics is that the data and they use the library both at school and in town another very nice project took place in the mountains in a small village in the mountains and this time it was middle school they were 11 year olds um, the via storm had you can see in the picture had um, tore down the trees two year the year previously and uh, so the students were very uh, upset still remember that they were sensitive to climate change on the other hand Greta Thunberg's movement brought uh, young people on the forefront and so the teacher was able to involve the students and they were a very lively class she said at times she had problems in containing them and um, also because they were not used as synthesizing their thoughts etc and she said the most difficult thing for her was actually to stand aside not to give the answers to let them keep on wondering but she was very happy of the results because the the final works were really good and also she reported some learners who were generally much less active found a way of um, making themselves noticed because this kind of approach brings uh, to um, make gives different possibilities to students who have got different learning styles a further interesting project was the one that saw uh, an episode in uh, I beg your pardon in oral history 
on the local territory. Our area is um, was a migration area to the USA in the early 20th century. So students interview the old people in their village and uh, also they visited the Multimedia Memory Archive of Friulian Migration. They also use the digital archives, European and soldiers' memories to discuss World War I, which is another I think, uh, episode, historical episode, which greatly affected our area in northeastern Italy. Very interesting was also the idea of uh, confronting in a classical high school, let's say, to confront Olympus versus Marvel, the old gods and the actual gods. So using all kind of sources, comics, cinema, the internet, to face uh, classical themes and see um, students came up with research questions which touched points such as the heroic values and the role today or very interesting some of them proposed to go deeper into the gender issue the treatment of the superheroines uh, and then we got a great classic uh, in Italy. All Italian schools studied it. Alessandro Manzoni, the betrothed in English, he promised his posy, Gertrude, the nun of Monza. Um, the circle of viewpoints was used, um, another um, technique of another routine of the Harvard thinking routines to and students asked questions and went looking for the answers but they had uh, to ask questions not from their viewpoint but from the point of view of some other uh, and uh, librarian intervene with uh, to show them the documentation and they had to act on source evaluation well, the two sides working together, each of them had to explain who they were and reflecting on the role. So librarians had to reflect because they were introducing themselves to teachers in a way, what it is finding versus searching, not just uh, finding the information, but uh, or, ju or just looking for that. Mm, they had to explain information organization and reflect on that because the other side they couldn't take things for granted. They had a different side to speak to. They had to communicate the services, what the library is for. And uh, they had the opportunity of learning from teachers how to teach, so become more effective instructors. Teachers participating um, reported their time constraints to students' participation in class with all the things they must do. It's difficult to give them the time to find a different approach. They reflected on the need to strengthen the basic competencies. And uh, they realized that information literacy needs a transdisciplinary year-long project. It can't be just done in one go. It's an essential uh, skill and uh, they reflected on the difference of transmitting knowledge versus building competence. What What is the real goal? Because notions, not knowledge in itself, is not, but notions uh, are don't last for life. Instead, competence does and makes more effective learners. Uh, to close the experience, um, we can't leave out a conclusion in pandemic times. Though these two experiences didn't take time in on, totally online, now we are all online and uh, further ex other experiences followed. Um, there was a resistance to e-learning before the pandemic and it was necessary now to turn to e-learning, e but it's necessary to transform the paradigm uh, and not to forget that e-learning is participating. It can't be just going in front of the webcam and reporting the same face-to-face -face lesson one would do. It didn't work in class, it works even less uh, behind the webcam. So using libraries and resources could be even more the key um, to have students being active learners, looking for the knowledge instead of reading the book. And uh, so tr actually having a school which tends to transform the digital natives to digital actives. 
Admittedly, this was not a report on a school library. This was a report on how librarians and teachers can work together to cope with uh, um, situations when they are not 100% favorable and resources, human resources, are there to actually um, help our students grow up. I leave you with this beautiful picture which comes from CPDWL contest and uh, thank you for listening. So thank you so much to Mathilde Fontanin for a uh, very inspiring speech. Uh, the experiences uh, she presented both with um, students and teachers um, can uh, offer a basis uh, of further uh, development both in, in Italy but also in other uh, countries. Uh, I think it's a useful experience. And she mentioned also the uh, Harvard uh, thinking routine. For those who are not particularly familiar, I would like to um, um, draw the attention to Project Zero's uh, portal, Project Zero's uh, thinking routine, routine toolbox uh, that provides um, uh, um, a lot of resources about uh, um, um, setting up a thinking routine, uh, for instance, a set of questions, uh, a sequence of steps in order to scaffold and support a student student's thinking. So um, if you are interested, you can visit Project Zero, Zero uh, at an um, Harvard Graduate School of Education website. Now we go on uh, with the, uh, the last contribution in the second session. Uh, Beatrice Eliuteri um, uh, is going to uh, reflect, uh, to speak about the research on reading motivation. Beatrice comes from a, a artistic and humanistic education. Uh, she has a bachelor degree in cultural heritage uh, applied on performing arts. A postgraduate master degree in communication information science, a speci specialization in library information science. As she's currently uh, doing a PhD at Roma Tre University. So um, she is involved in the Italian Library Association and the um, National Standing Committee of the School Libraries of the Italian Library Association. So um, um, Beatrice, the micro is yours. Thank you so much for uh, being with us. Thank you, Luisa. Thank you, everyone. Um, I will share my screen to let you see something. Uh, promise I won't be too boring. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, as Luisa was saying, yes, uh, I'm not yet a librarian, uh, um, but I'm a school librarian wannabe, and then I am a member of the um, uh, School Libraries Commission of Italian Libraries Association. I'm currently doing a PhD at the Department of Education in University of Roma Tre, and my um, topic is reading motivation. So I will link my intervention on literacy, but uh, as um, uh, Matilde was saying, from another point of view. Uh, so um, I, I um, always start <laughs> talking about reading everybody uh, of course knows what we are talking about but uh, remembering that reading is a technology so it's not innate it's not something we are born with uh, it's always useful to try to understand how to enhance reading motivation reading behaviors and um, and all that, and so it's something that is evolving on different supports. It came from uh, ancient uh, stone uh, writing, then the book, the codex, the the internet, then uh, uh, the computer, ebooks, and all of that. And we are embracing all kind of reading. And then it's an ability, as as my colleague 
were saying from this session, uh, literacy, uh, personal information literacy is not something that comes along with reading itself. It needs effort, it needs um, a practice, and it's uh, a continuum. So uh, it comes from decoding when we all try to uh, transform it uh, and transform um, signs into sounds and then associate them with concepts and thoughts and then comprehend and make inference to what we are reading and then that's actually uh, prose information literacy so uh, understand what the text is telling us and dialoguing with the text but also reading is a behavior and i'm taking um the metaphor of the iceberg that comes from of course uh, the, the most known Freud uh, theory and trying to apply it to the um, to the uh, to our topic. So uh, when we think of the iceberg, pardon me for the design and <laughs> the artistic um, uh, frame, uh, the behavior just the tip of the iceberg. So we are talking about what lies underneath the behavior that it's motivation and that's actually what i'm studying and what i'm specializing into um uh, we'll take uh, another theory um that all librarians know uh, all promoting librarians know that is Aiden chambers reading cycle and i try to uh, make another cycle that's the motivation cycle as you uh, probably know uh Aiden chambers cycle is um has been uh, built uh, with the project tell me so uh trying to understand how to involve and make um kids um uh, in um, continuing reading, so uh, it's not uh, it's not mess, um, it's not enough to read. Uh, we need to have a free selection of readings, and uh, the kid has to be um, has to feel free to select what he's reading and have um, actually the the instruments and a library or. Um, the, the the ability to, to choose and then the most important thing is the response to the reading so uh, the enabling adult that uh, of course for um, chambers is the educator but actually is the librarian because this circle applies also to adult readers and um, needs to uh, connect all those dots and make the uh, the wheel go round. So I uh, transformate that uh, reading cycle in the motivation cycle um, from different theories, from uh, the self-determination theory, self-efficacy theory, the um, somatic market theory, they're all uh, psychological theories of motivation and not not, all, not only motivation. Um, we identified for our research five uh, dimension of motivation. Uh, um, scientific um, literature about motivation uh, is not really um Concord. <laughs> it doesn't agree totally on all the definition of reading motivation and its as aspects and dimensions. So we chose these five dimensions and I'll explain why we chose these five. And it comes from the bottom one that is utility and that's just reading to have better marks better work so social convenience uh, to social recognition so we are all we are standing in the external extrinsic motivation field and uh, social recognition is reading to have something to say <laughs> uh, to people or to uh, get known by people from what we are reading uh, it's uh, status quo and self-efficacy that has a lot to do with literacy so the ability to read comprehend what we read and not feel frustration when we are reading about feel um, able to develop our reading, uh, reading ability is not about it being a only a successful reader is about thinking that we can grow as readers uh, that we, we can learn how to read better and not that we are just 
uh, bad at it and we can uh, can improve our ability then attitude has a lot to do with the feelings of reading so uh, feeling good when reading or feeling bad when reading and feeling bad when reading or good uh, is also a predictor of uh, if we we are if we are going to read because uh, if the thinking of reading makes me feel bored of course I will avoid that that, that kind of um, behavior and then there's self determination that a lot to do with selection and is about uh, being a reader so uh, reading being part of the self and that's the most uh, the, the higher motivation we can have. Um, we came to this from um, a research that um, I did for my specialization degree in library science. And I used, uh, it was uh, conducted in 2018, and um, it used the debate as a methodology uh, of, of of inquiry so um we start we we tried this qualitative methodology uh we're trying uh proposing uh there were seven classes um uh, 100 um people uh, students uh, from 12 to 17 and 19 in some cases and they were asked to just uh take part to a laboratory our rhetoric workshop like laboratory in which they will um, um, experiment how to make an argument and what logical fallacies and all these kind of things and then at the end we there were two uh, encounters two two meetings uh, we tried to have to just take practice in it and as a theme we we chose um reading so uh, they they had to say um stand all in each part so take the point of view of pro readers so reading is something good is something nice is something we have to do and all of that and against reading so even if they were readers they were actually um very good readers, expert readers, they had to um, take the point of view of the different um, part and party. And that made, uh, that allowed um, motivation emerge. Of course, though, though those were uh, complex data, uh, there were videos and filming and what you can see in here are the, the blackboard and the, um, writing some of the, the students did and then all the debates and from that uh, we um, we took a lot of motivations and analyzed uh, the frequency of those motivation and then uh, now we are conducting uh, we are trying we are starting a quantitative survey that instead of just um, making motivation arouse is trying to uh, measure how much of this motivation. So we are um, building a tool uh, to to measure motivation that, of course, is based on the um, psychology and scientific literature on the matter. And we will apply it uh, in trying to demonstrate how uh, some approaches uh, can be actually um, 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 uh, take uh, in act by librarians and teachers to uh, burst motivation. So we are not just um, trying to enhance the, the behavior, but to actually find out what lies beneath. And those are actually the, um, the five factors that we choose, uh, that we chose to uh, build the, the, the tool. Self-determination, that's on the uh, positive uh, attitude. So positive motivation. So we, when we have self-determination, we have free choice, and then we can actually um, burst 
curiosity. That's the natural need everybody has for uh, knowing things, that all uh, basic needs of the human human being. Then attitude, it's uh, the step um, under that, that is positive feeling association. And so that makes, uh, makes us feel excited at the idea of reading. Self-efficacy, that is uh, the competence perception. So I'm able to read. Uh, I know what my level of reading is. I'm not afraid of reading something that's maybe a little bit more difficult than what I'm used to, but I think I can improve my reading abilities. And that makes us feel empowered and because we experiment success. And then social recognition that with kids, especially adolescents, that when I'm conducting my studies is the crucial uh, point because social recognition is something that we all take in great account. And that um, comprehends involvement. So having someone to talk to about what we are reading, um, having other readers to talk to and being respected as a reader. And that makes us feel proud of reading because we are recognized by others and then that's utility and that social convenience oh uh, uh, in italy um, unfortunately social convenience for reading and studying and um, and culture is year by year um, being demolished and that makes us uh, make people feel uh, that Putting effort in reading, studying, that's not the same thing, but in, in taking that activity as itself, so not just for uh, reading instruction or um, um, reading, um, I don't know, some document, um, it, it's, it's worth. So effort must be felt worth for social convenience to make people reiterate the, the reading behavior. And I think that's something underneath the, the most common motivation adapted in the ESTAT study to, uh, for reading motivation, that is, I don't have time. People have time. Um, it's not about how much time we have, it's about our, our priorities. And utility is the thing that, mm, among the others, make us um, build our priorities. And if we don't feel that uh, this effort is worth, we don't think that's a priority, reading, studying, and analysis. So that's uh, the internal and external forces. They make us make the reading choice. And so all the behaviors and improve our abilities and all of that. Why not? What happens if? they are on the negative side. So if there's no self-determination, there's constriction, that's actually what happens in most schools. <laughs> so I choose what you have to read. I um, uh, don't make you feel like you have the, a choice in what you're reading and if you want to read. And so that can cause rejection. Uh, a negative... Uh, and and can from that a negative feeling association that can come uh, that can be boring maybe when um, i don't know the teacher the librarian is suggesting me and is making me read something that is actually too simple for me and i feel bored or uh, i feel bored because i can't understand and that's about self-efficacy so that can make us feel anxious about reading and self-efficacy is something uh, we, we talked about it low competence perception so ability we know literacy is a continuum the, the ability comes from one side to the another and can improve in the in time and so and of course, we know from illiteracy studies that if we don't continue to read, we lose that ability <laughs> step by step and can cause frustration. Um, feeling not able to read and feeling that we are not going to improve to read makes us feel frustrated and makes us not choose to read. So avoid reading. Social recognition, that's something that emerged from the study of 2000 and. Um, 
and 18, uh, isolation. So uh, if the reader is uh, depicted as someone who is uh, by itself, we have um, our great poet, uh, Giacomo Leopardi, that's often taken as a, reference, as a reference for the reader, the intellectual, that's isolated, actually a crooked back uh, with a uh, low light uh, on the desk. Um, that, that's fantastic. Well, um, I mean, Amazing what kids told us in the debate. Like, if when you read, you read on the desk, you have to to have a um, a small light on the book, and your eyes are are swollen, and you are like uncomfortable on the chair. Why, when you watch a movie, you can stay on your bed. You are comfortable. You can read on your bed. <laughs> we, 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 we told them, but uh, that's a scenario that uh, we both we built on the figure of the of the reader. That's something social and um, uh, about sem semiotic and anthropology of the reader. And I can conduct to shame. So if I say I'm I am a reader. Oh, you are one of that crooked back strange people that isolate themselves to taking their own word oh shame on you that can feel uh, that can make us and feel embarrassed they can make us feel shame for what we are reading and then avoid reading and then utility we uh, talked about it uh, social inconvenience uh, uh, makes reading feel like something we don't have to do we uh, it's a waste of time of course i don't have time a waste of money i don't have more books cost too much books don't cost too much not no, no, not compared to other things and then there's libraries so you can you can read for free um that's all the dimension they make us um making act especially kids Compensative strategies meant to develop self-esteem and need for belonging. We have a need for belonging on our social environment. And if that makes us feel something that, that what we are doing and, and it's it's a waste of time, it's a waste of money, it's something that makes us isolate, not making friends, and we are not um we did not experiment uh, flow experience, so we are not uh, we did not experiment uh, what uh, expert reader experiment when they read that something out of the world and imagination a burst of fantasy and language if we don't experiment that and social uh, um, social uh, figures tell us that that's not true that's just something you have to do it's something that will make you feel better but doesn't act on the motivation that will lead to a no reading choice um, so what can school and public, public librarians do? Well, actually, <laughs> a lot, because um, uh, especially in Italy, because um, because of what my colleagues said, in Italy we um, have really um, virtuous realities. Uh, public librarians, uh, um, school librarians working together with teachers, um, doing a great job. The most of the country is um, uh, does suffer from a lack of librarians and school libraries, um, and that makes uh, maybe teacher feel uh, like uh, left alone in this in, in this in this duty because uh, uh, it's actually um, the the. The role of the librarian is so specific. Um, it, it's crucial. It's uh, it's something um, important that they can lead teachers, researchers, and uh, kids experiment all those fields. So well, what can they do? They can monitor. They can actually measure. They can uh, monitorate what um, motivation lies underneath the specific. Um, public they refer to. Um, appelling to quantitative research, of course, is not done in the library, it's done in uh, bigger institutes. And qualitative research that can be done in co cooperation with academic and um, other institutional fields. So, um, 
with the universities, with the, the ISTAT and other institutions. And then the most important thing, take the action. So if they know what dimension of motivation is under attack, uh, is, is, is lacking, they can take action. So they have to know what lies underneath to uh, empower uh, the, um, the field and uh, enhance. Uh, motivation and then burst of course behavior. I will leave here some bibliographic suggestions and of course chambers and then um, uh, reading uh, motivation studies and I thank you for listening. I hope I didn't take too much time and I hope I've been clear. My English is a bit rusty <laughs> but um, I hope uh, that has been something that, that can be useful to the cause. <laughs> Absolutely useful, useful indeed, Beatrice. Thank you so much for sharing your reflections and research. Now we go back to uh, Maris Tofoletto and Simonetta Pasqualis. Uh, Maris Tofoletto, Trieste Municipality Museum and Library Service, is the head of the newspaper and journal library, Fulvio Tomizza, and also um, the chair of the distributed library project of Trieste municipality. She's in charge of two interesting projects. Uh, Trieste has a reading city and Trieste Pact for reading. She started as a bookseller and then she became a librarian in the public libraries of the city. She collaborates to the Bibliosocial Labs uh, uh, together with Animazione Sociale Journal and also she writes for Contemporanea, Rivista di Storia dell'Ottocento del Novecento, um, uh, 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 a journal about contemporary uh, history and other journals. Simonetta Pasqualis, Trieste University Language Center and International Women's House, graduated as a translator for English and Dutch, uh, she's an um, academic librarian since a, uh, she's been an academic librarian since 1985, both in the science area, su science subject area, International Center for Theoretical Physics, International School for Advanced Studies, and the humanities area, uh, University of um, Classical Studies Library. Nowadays, she works for the University Language Center's Information Officer and Secretary. And over the years, she was entrusted with several regional and national assignments, duties, roles for the Italian Library Association. Since uh, 2003, she has been a NIFLA delegate for uh, the Italian Library Association in the series and other continuing uh, resources first and then in the art libraries. Now in, she's involved in uh, literacy, literacy and reading uh, session, uh, taking part to many IFLA uh, link uh, as a speaker. Nowadays she works voluntary as a librarian of the Trieste International Women's House, which participates to the distributed library project. So uh, she she uh, she is speaking. Uh, she is presenting uh, Marvis and the contribution about uh, the distributed library project. Thank you so much, uh, Simonetta. The micro is yours. Thank you for Thank struggling you. <laughs> and moving now? to another yes. computer. <laughs> I know that you are on duty this morning in your library. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for your avail availability to be with us. Shall I share the screen? Yes, click on the share button uh, at the bottom. Yes, I did, uh, but... Uh, and then uh, choose a window, finestra window. Yeah, no, I chose too many things, evidently. Let me see. Ah, uh, sorry. Close the, the other one. Okay, share. 
share screen or the video sorry I don't yeah, know. no share screen share um, screen and then i go to share screen again there and then finestra finest you see yes that's screen. what i did yes but uh it is doesn't your, is, is your pdf open my pdf is open yes it is uh yes and i put it also in the Yes, in modalità di lettura, which is, should be this one, isn't it? Can you, can you see it now? Yes, now, okay. Finally, I suppose. Is it right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So the Vista, uh, Vista, so fine, the screen. Well, it was, yes, it was not easy. Okay, click, good. Cl um, click on uh, Vista. Uh, Simonetta, cl please click on Vista. And full screen, modalità schermo intero, no? Modalità schermo intero, perfect. That's right, yeah, okay. Thank yes, you so much. Thank you, yes, thank you. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, a, a very, it is an ongoing project. It is, uh, of course, it is something that started, let's say, a few years ago uh, in, in, a small, uh, in a small way, and then it goes on uh, adding um, libraries, let's say, in this distributed library project, which is quite interesting because it is a, a it is a how to say a, the cooperation among many different souls uh, of the libraries. Uh, so Trieste is a melting pot of cultures and literatures, and uh, it is a, an interesting place because it is suited. Uh, uh, to represent the intersection among creativity, literature, and society. It is well known because of its famous writers, uh, like Italo Svevo, James Joyce, and many others, and um, also for the reading passion of its citizens. Uh, in the national ranking for number of books uh, read or bought for the city offer or participation to cultural events, Trieste is always at the top. The city history is a perfect example of how literature and culture in general can promote integration and respect among different communities, while at the same time preserving specific cultural identities. So the Distributed Library Project is a galaxy of reading points and small libraries, often hosted in unusual places, such as the swimming pool, a cafe, a restaurant, a bathing resort, together with associations, schools, and other public and private institutions, which share the idea of bringing books, activities, citizens' participation directly to community life. The project deals with service uh, active in youth education, long life learning, social assistance, culture, and information for all. It aims at bettering life quality of Trieste citizens, sharing cultural patrimony and skills, offering new spaces for creativity through networking. And the project wants to be inclusive and open to different people, thus embodying the idea of participatory library, which can be a reference point for the city and its territory. So the participative library, it is based on the Ranganat of Trinity, readers, books and stuff, which creates a virtuous cycle. Books are for use. So here you can see, for instance, the young people uh, having reading activities and sharing readings, uh, allowed loud readings uh, on the pier, on one of the main piers of the city, or every person his or her book. So groups of young girls and boys who meet after school hours in school libraries or in other public spaces in order to read together and organize loud voice readings for other young people. Every book its reader, for instance, this is a small kitchen library made of books available by, diet, by date because it gives you the idea of how the recipe books developed over the years. Save the time of the reader. So the shelf must tell the book story in a way that allows readers to find out what they are looking for. And there is the need of a catalog and on, on a shelf system suitable for that collection or for that particular library and of services appropriate to the readers of that library. So um, without having professional librarians um, most of the times, how can we manage this point? So our cooperation network managed to solve the problem 
offering a lot of continuous professional training. And in this way, let's say, um, um, developing the librarian skills in people who were just uh, um, giving their voluntarily uh, co contribution to this project. The library is a growing organism, so future perspective working together and strengthen, and strengthen the network. Uh, for instance, here you can see uh, one teacher with boys of his class or her class. Then there is the pact for reading that multiplies the collaboration and learn by doing, sharing of tasks, find new solutions. And this is a network of reading points. This is just, the, let's say, the beginning, the beginning of these uh, reading points spread out all over the territory, giving rise to shared spaces, fostering aggregation, socialization of knowledge and cultural growth. So talking about uh, the reading points at the beginning of 2020, we had around 40 reading points with many different solutions specifically designed for the many different area. Uh, reading points of the swimming pool at the beach resort and the restaurant, in the cake shop, in the retirement home, in the schools, and they all put their heritage at disposal of the neighborhood citizens, answering to many different needs, even the unexpressed ones. Five are social libraries, 17 are school libraries, 10 are special libraries, three are commercial libraries, three are recreative libraries, as we call them. It was not by chance that the first reading point was inside the retirement home Casa Serena, following the Basalia thought of opening institutions normally closed to the general public. One of the recent new entry is the J Library, the ultimate paradigm of closed institutions. So now I give you an overview of what we have in our network, social libraries, neighborhood and social regeneration for that favor of people meeting, Agora, micro area Ponciana, which is an area uh, in a, let's say, underprivileged zone um, of Trieste. Here you can have old people and young people sharing uh, their knowledge. Work grants for underprivileged people. Simonetta, we don't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, now uh, we, we can hear you. Is it all right? <laughs> yes, but... I don't know what happened. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's, it's quite complicated this, this time. Let me share again. Okay, because we heard you until uh, school libraries, then the, the audio... Was yes, that's, that's what I was. Let me see. We heard um, now you, you, you uh, speaking about okay. Agora. Agora. Yes. Okay. And this is um, this is uh, yes uh, the biblioteca, the school libraries. Can you can you see them? No, we can't. You can't see. We can the see. School we can see you. We can see you, but uh, not the your presentation. So try to share it. 
again if it is possible. Otherwise, we will make the, the presentation available to our uh, attendees and listeners, viewers. Can you see it now? No, I can't. Oh, okay. So let, let's go. Let's get out completely now. Sorry. Let me see what happened. I don't know. Because I was sharing. I was sharing the... The screen. Yeah, I was sharing the screen. I was seeing the screen like before. So I do not know. Sorry. Let me see. So in the now meantime, see, now no, we, we, we can see the presentation. In the meantime, uh, would you like to uh, to tell us how this project is uh, developing? Um, uh, what are the future steps? Uh, you mentioned the jail, the jail library. So it would be nice to just be before the let's say the COVID uh, uh, closing. So actually, it is still something yeah. that. Uh, you know, it stopped by. It was it was not possible at the moment to to to, to bring it on. Then we now that we have a lot of school libraries. Uh, unfortunately, um, th let's say that my last um, my last um, part of the presentation is of course uh, full of pictures of the many beautiful places and reading points that we have. So uh, since you have uh, you have it, you can maybe share, let's say, somewhere in the with the people, and um, and then uh, we have, for instance, some apart from the special libraries, which the library where I work, the International Women House, is also considered a special library. Then we have the so-called commercial libraries, which is of course the rest, the restaurant, which was before. Um, shown before, then we have a, the sweet library, a small um, bakery for, for pastries and things like that. Then you have Libronia, the so-called biblioteca, the library inside a bathing resort. And then we, we have another very nice library, let's say, in the um, swimming pool, which is called Stile Libro. So um, all these kind of different places uh, give uh, offer different uh, uh, let's say uh, apart from books and reading points they offer also different uh, um, ways of participating to the activities uh, that are given there and um, actually um, I there was also in the in the sliding there was a tag cloud that gives you um, the words, the important words of this uh, uh, project, which are aggregation, skill development, cultural growth, relationships, training, active citizenship, trust, sharing of knowledge and experience, co-planning, reuse of spaces and furniture, socialization and gift. So I would say that uh, Quite a lot of um, like quite a lot of activities uh, are going to be uh, resumed as soon as we can uh, um, as soon as we can open let's say again all these spaces in the in a more normal way despite everything and um, in the last uh, slide of my presentation you can have also and this is something that maybe you can share. Um, the um, mailing, the mailing address of me and of um, Mavis, so that people can ask us, uh, uh, can can give us, uh, you know, queries, whatever. So this is. Uh, I'm very sorry that of all these inconveniences, uh, but unfortunately, um, it seems that today technology doesn't want to cooperate. <laughs> So challenges in challenging time. So, yes, definitely, definitely. So okay. thank you so, so much, Simonetta. Thank you. Sorry, for the, sorry for the inconveniences again. Don't worry, we 
we have uh, your PowerPoint presentation, and then we will have your. You have your my PDF and PowerPoint, PowerPoint presentation for the yes. proceeding. So thank you so okay. much. Thank you so much. Sorry for that. <laughs> Don't worry. Thank you, Simonetta and Maurice as well. Now um, we are moving south. We heard from uh, northern and eastern Italy, from central Italy, uh, Bologna, and now we are going south to Foggia, uh, Apulia region, uh, where um, a new children's library, the Magna Capitana Children's Library, uh, was opened uh, recently, but unfortunately the pandemic uh, started and uh, so uh, everything is uh, freezed at, at the moment. So we hope to um, um, go back to this amazing library with um, also um, uh, and pupils, teachers and, uh, and share uh, reading projects. Uh, so uh, Milena Tancredi, the head of uh, the Biblioteca Magna Capitana is presenting her uh, library. La biblioteca dei ragazzi è sì, qui che ha detto di essere eh, piena di invia di bimbe. Aspettiamo che, che passi questo periodo. Intanto, ecco che cosa abbiamo voluto realizzare spostandoci dalla palazzina. Eh, un posto che mh, centrasse di più la fisicità, per cui c'è tanto spazio per muoversi, per andare dai piccoli che sono lì in fondo fino ai grandi che crescono nella biblioteca, oltrepassando poi lo spazio della biblioteca ragazzi per arrivare eh, nello spazio degli adolescenti. Per cui siamo contenti di, questa, di questo cambio perché è un cambio che è, è a, a favore dello sviluppo e della crescita dei nostri piccoli utenti ma anche al, nella condivisione di tutte le attività che la biblioteca La Magna Capitana offre per cui ecco magari mentre i bambini e le bambine sono qui e il genitore, il nonno, la nonna eh, può andare a seguire una guida all'ascolto, una presentazione di un libro, eh, ovviamente ci saranno molti momenti condivisi di lettura, ma dare l'opportunità anche di vivere questo posto come un posto appunto di socializzazione, il posto dello stare insieme, dove è bello stare, dove è bello sedersi, dove è bello condividere, guardate tutto è in questa ottica e dove presto uh, ci si potrà stare uh, tutti insieme. <coughs> so, um, Milena Sancredi, head of the Children's Library of Magna Capitana, Foggia, um, is a member of the uh, board of the uh, Executive National Board of the Italian Library Association and the um, uh, Nati per Leggere, Born to Read uh, member with responsibility for advocacy and promotion of reading. Um, she's also a member for the National uh, the Executive um, Board member of the National Commission for Libraries and Children's uh, uh, Services and uh, a censorship um, observatory, and also the Born to Read uh, editorial observatory. Her speech was about uh, the new Magna Capitana Children's Library. And she said that the Children's Library is here and is waiting to be full of children. <clears throat> we are waiting for this time to pass. In the meantime, here's what we wanted to achieve by moving to this building, a place that focuses more on the physical experience. <clears throat> Therefore, there is a lot of space where to move, to go to the children's area, uh, the elder children uh, who can grow up in the library and crossing over the children's library space to arrive to reach the teenager's uh, place. So we are happy to, um, for this change because it's not only a change in favor of the growth and development of our small users, 
but it also shares all of the uh, facilities and activities uh, that Magna Capitana Library provides to all of patrons. Perhaps uh, while children are here in the library, it, one of the parents or the grandmother or grandfather can attend uh, one of the listening um, uh, guides or books uh, explanation. Uh, there is, um, there will be, of course, uh, a lot of uh, share reading moments, uh, reading aloud uh, and, and shared in a group. But this will, we will also give the opportunity to leave this place as one of so socialization or spending time together, a place where you are glad to be, um, glad to see, to share. And it's, uh, of course, concentrated on this perspe perspective and where we will gather soon all together again, hopefully. So uh, now uh, we are in, in the third session um, with the contribution by uh, Milena Tancredi. Uh, and this session uh, is focusing on innovative reading and learning spaces. But before that, um, I would like to uh, go back to my um, uh, presentation. Uh, I had some troubles in uh, sharing it at the beginning, so uh, I hope the, um, uh, this will uh, work now. So I'm trying to share my screen again. So uh, let, let me introduce very briefly um, the, my colleagues in the Standing Committee on School Libraries, Tiziana Cerrato from the uh, Grammar School, uh, Massimo D'Azeglio Grammar School in Turin, and she's also the coordinator of the National Coordination of school library networks, a, an important legacy uh, from Antonella Bischetti, uh, Beatrice Liutei, we uh, just um, uh, heard from her, Alessandra Luciana, um, High School for Agriculture in, in San Michele all'Adige, uh, and Mario Priore, um, uh, middle school teacher, uh, uh, Italian uh, language and literature at the comprehensive school uh, in Bella, Potenza, in southern Italy. Giulia Rossi, uh, engaged in a Born to Read project. Uh, and she is uh, located in central Italy, uh, Rieti. And Francesca Tritto, um, high school teacher, uh, particularly um, um, experienced uh, in uh, um, reading, reading education, reading promotion, also involved in uh, uh, different co uh, codes, uh, different uh, media, uh, different strategies. And she's at the Marco Polo High School in Bari, Puglia. Uh, our action plan uh, aims at uh, uh, improving our uh, contribution to uh, publications, new publications, including hopefully the proceedings of this meeting. So uh, uh, carried out um, a service on the so-called best practices in uh, different areas, uh, school libraries, uh, organization, management, cooperation, uh, reading, uh, information literacy, education, strategies, and so on. Um, we also aim at uh, organizing uh, and or, or contributing uh, to uh, meetings, seminars, webinars like this one. Um, we also aim at uh, improving uh, the advocacy action. Uh, so uh, we are trying to collect uh, uh, data from school libraries that prove how uh, a functioning school library uh, can uh, benefit, um, uh, can be beneficial uh, to the school, uh, to the individual person, to the school community and to society. 
So um, we also uh, are engaged in providing uh, education, uh, training, uh, professional development. In particular, we, we uh, are trying to work very closely uh, with uh, the different uh, and several sectors of our associations, uh, as you have seen, different groups, uh, um, uh, the executive board uh, members, but also uh, the other commissions and groups. And also, we are interested in the internationalization, the dialogue with other um, associations and colleagues uh, uh, worldwide. Um, as you uh, so yesterday, for those who attended the first business meeting of the EFLA School Libraries uh, Standing Committee uh, meeting, uh, um, uh, there were many uh, observers uh, from Italy, and I'm particularly happy uh, to uh, um, uh, share, to have more uh, people involved uh, in our activities. And of course, we are um, eager to contribute uh, to um, uh, implementing uh, the IFLA guidelines and um, the uh, new uh, manifesto. Uh, so, uh, but uh, we uh, we couldn't do very much um, uh, without our colleagues. Uh, so we uh, asked uh, we asked uh, regional um, presidents. Uh, um, um, the, the presidents of the uh, Italian Library Association regional uh, sections. Uh, we pressed them, uh, but we are very grateful for, uh, to them because they um, uh, nominated um, uh, some representative for school libraries in order to establish a more stable and, uh, and more steady uh, uh, relationship um, and uh, work closely with the um, regions and territories. So we have a, a good links uh, uh, and we are starting uh, a new way of uh, working uh, as a com uh, standing committee members uh, with uh, other parts of, uh, of our uh, association. Uh, let me uh, show the IFA School Library section picture uh, because I think it's nice to have a, an idea uh, also of its members uh, from uh, many different countries. And let me also show the uh, IESO website, web, web page uh, uh, screenshot uh, because in uh, the Italian Library Association is a member uh, of both associations, IFLA and ISL. So uh, I think it, uh, we, as a commission, as a standing committee, um, um, we are interested and committed to contribute more actively to those associations. So um, I would like to, in, in this um, uh, speech, I, I would like to uh, clarify some uh, aspects of, of the Italian situation of school libraries. Um, and, the, um, and I would like to underline how important, uh, how uh, much important is networking. Networking is to grow up uh, together, both uh, schools, school libraries, public libraries, and eventually uh, academic libraries, in order to establish a more tight, uh, um, a tighter, a closer uh, collaboration in order to support our uh, young and not so young users, uh, patrons. Um, I'm, um, I'm providing also some uh, strategic, uh, some examples of strategic alliance, um, uh, both uh, about the school library networks, uh, the distributed library, and the parents, the role of parents association. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the school library as a any time, uh, as any 
type of, uh, of, li uh, of um, as I other libraries of any type and dimension uh, is a complex and growing organism. A, it's not uh, the simply the, the, sim the simple addition of some elements or some uh, factors, but is the outcome, the um, uh, the result uh, of a combination of fundamental elements like uh, spaces, of course, uh, equipments, collection, uh, both in digital and print for, uh, format uh, stuff. So uh, these, uh, of, of course, uh, uh, um, a library has to focus uh, to be uh, user-centered, uh, to focus uh, on uh, users' uh, needs, uh, information needs, uh, education needs, cultural and so social, even personal, individual interests. So the uh, but uh, all of these factors, uh, uh, the, the users, the, pa the patrons, the, the member of the, community, the library community and uh, uh, other structural uh, um, elements like spaces and collections and so on, uh, couldn't, mean, couldn't mean uh, much uh, unless a, a vision, a theoretical uh, uh, framework and also a network framework because it, in a library can uh, can function uh, uh, on by um, its own, but it, it has to uh, relate uh, to other type of libraries and uh, cultural institutions. So these are um, all these things uh, and concepts, uh, basic concepts, concepts apply uh, to the school library too whose program is, first of all, educational. Of course, it's also uh, cultural, uh, recreational, uh, social, but uh, first of all, is educational. Uh, and, and, and the program is, is the library is asked to, to function, to operate in a networked uh, perspective, not in isolation, uh, both inside the school walls and uh, to, in order to serve the whole uh, school community as, as a whole, uh, and also outside, uh, outside the school, uh, with other schools, um, with uh, local uh, agencies like public libraries, uh, museums, cultural associations, and so on. The um, uh, school system uh, is a... Um, a, based in a three year of kind, kindergarten, uh, five years of primary school, three years of middle school or junior high school, and five years of um, uh, high school, so 13 uh, years in uh, instruction. And uh, a, the um, uh, the legal framework, as uh, Maria and others uh, have already mentioned, uh, unfortunately uh, is not um, in including uh, the, uh, the school library, the school librarian's job position. Uh, we, mm, uh, so uh, as already mentioned, uh, the autonomous province of Bolzano, Bozen, uh, since 1990, um, had uh, its own uh, uh, law and fundings and so on for uh, both for school libraries and school librarians, but uh, in the rest of the country, the job position doesn't exist. Uh, and neither in a specific um, special specialization course uh, are um, available uh, at universities. Uh, the Italian Library Association. Uh, uh, both at uh, central uh, level and also regional level is doing uh, has been doing very much in this field. There are uh, some new projects uh, um, about education and training, for instance, uh, a course, a the education and training course on school librarianship uh, will be held in June, uh, and another course more. Uh, this will be more addressed to. Uh, 
um, librarians or Italian Library Association uh, members, and a similar edition but more focused uh, and addressed to uh, school teachers uh, will be held uh, in September. Uh, this afternoon in the round table, uh, the uh, executive mm, board member uh, Patrizia Luperi, um, who is in charge of the education uh, and training for the association, uh, will be uh, providing uh, more details uh, of the action that uh, the Italian Library Association is doing in this field. But we have to consider that if a, a librarian uh, wants to specialize, for instance, in uh, a prison librarianship, uh, children's librarianship, or um, uh, any kind of um, uh, um, let me say so, social librarianship uh, as to uh, gain um, uh, his uh, knowledge from the field, from uh, other colleagues, and also to from uh, uh, training courses uh, from from our association. So schools, going back to um, uh, school libraries, uh, schools are autonomous. So it's up to uh, each individual school investing or not. Uh, to in the school library development. Um, I said that the, uh, the legal uh, framework is very fragile about, the, about school libraries and uh, the job position, but school libraries and school librarians too are mentioned in many, many um, official uh, documents. Uh, and the uh, I, I'm not going uh, deep in, in this uh, list, uh, it's a very short list because uh, the tales well, could be uh, more, um, uh, could be much more, but the, um, uh, an interesting project uh, uh, that is focusing on the enhancement of uh, school libraries uh, is the Action uh, 24 within the Digital School National Plan uh, and uh, 3,333 schools applied for that. Uh, the, many of them have already got the uh, fun, uh, got, uh, funding and are implementing the project. Uh, the um, uh, the recent law, uh, national law on reading promotion support that was approved last year, uh, just uh, a year ago, Article 5 is about the school libraries uh, and um, is, uh, underli underlines how uh, uh, school libraries can play a really relevant role in uh, reading promotion. So uh, there are also funding uh, for uh, some... Um, to support some actions in, in this field. Um, another uh, thought is about uh, um, sustainability. Um, uh, global problems, global issues, and, and also the dramatic ones that we are experiencing uh, need a global uh, vision, a global strategies. Uh, and uh, the UN agenda um, set up in uh, 2015 uh, in order to uh, achieve by 2030 uh, the so-called uh, develop sustainable development uh, goals um, uh, call for a stronger action uh, also um, by school libraries, because he, uh, IFLA uh, uh, endorsed the uh, 2030 agenda and uh, invited uh, libraries of any type uh, in 2016 to uh, play a role, to um, uh, be active uh, in achieving and contributing uh, to the achievement of the sustainable development goals. And uh, objective four, uh, quality uh, instruction, uh, is particularly uh, important, relevant for us. But we know very well from uh, uh, academic and uh, professional findings, uh, uh, research that uh, 
the human uh, profession, uh, professional factors uh, agent plays a particular uh, crucial role. This is why I'm underlying how uh, the lack of uh, information, school library information specialist uh, position um, uh, affects both the quality of school library services inside the school or inside the school library network, but also in the relationship with public librarians, for instance, because they, uh, we should work on the same uh, level with the same, more or less, <laughs> same education and training uh, preparation. So in order to establish a very fruitful dialogue, so uh, it's important, um, uh, we know that the Italian Library Associ Association um, um, is committed, but uh, can do uh, that much in uh, having the uh, job position recognized. In the meantime, there is so much for those who are really motivated and uh, interested in developing good, uh, um, uh, good um, school library services and activities, a uh, good school library program. So it's important that um, uh, those who are in charge of the school library uh, participate uh, actively in, in, in the professional associations, specific groups, uh, as the uh, Italian Library Association has, also, um, they should be uh, they, they should establish uh, uh, partnerships with other school libraries, uh, lo local agencies, uh, and networks uh, in uh, in order not to work in isolation, in order to benefit from others' uh, experience, uh, to establish a good uh, cooperation with uh, libraries of different uh, type, the uh, public libraries, academic research libraries. And it's important to underline the value of the joint education and training that uh, Italian Library Association is trying to provide uh, you know, both to public librarians and uh, uh, school librarians or uh, school teachers. Uh, also, um, as um, Mathilde Fontanin uh, underlined in her speech. So uh, the basic principle is that uh, it's important to have a library in every school, a functioning, a proper functioning library uh, in, with uh, spa all, all, um, allotted spaces, um, um, good quality collection, uh, trained and personal, and so on. So. In order to support uh, the, the work of um, school libraries and teacher librarians involved uh, in, in school libraries, uh, last year uh, was a formally uh, a coordination of school library networks uh, was established, was formally established. Uh, this is the screenshot of uh, its um, web, web page, home web page. Uh, the, uh, the coordination uh, supports uh, uh, the, the school library networks. So each network uh, uh, can be uh, made up of many schools, and each school uh, is each school uh, can be made up uh, be made up by many buildings. So, uh, for instance, in, um, in the Torino Piemonte ne uh, School Library Network, uh, we have more or less. Uh, uh, 40, no, 51 um, uh, schools collaborating, which means that uh, there are um, uh, 100 buildings, uh, schools uh, um, involved. So a huge number and the and function, a functioning library can uh, reach uh, um, um, a, a larger audience. So in another interesting network that uh, is also part of the national coordination, the, the coordination of the school library network uh, 
uh, is um, chaired by uh, the by the um, Massimo D'Azeglio Grammar School, Liceo Classico Massimo D'Azeglio, um, located in Turin. Uh, <laughs> he's a, a um, uh, headmaster and uh, um, it's a headmaster and also um, it's a teacher uh, librarian uh, Tiziana Cerrato um, are doing a great job in order to enhance the uh, action of the coordination. Uh, another network that also is a part of the national coordination is a Rete Biblo, Biblo network. Uh, it's interesting to um, underline how uh, the, uh, this network focuses on a very strong partnership with many mm, uh, agencies, many uh, entities, both private and, and public. Uh, um, so um, they, um, one of the main aim uh, of this network is to transform um, um, as you can see in this picture, the same the same room uh, with uh, not particularly advanced, uh, I mean, or dramatic uh, architectural works, but uh, simply changing colors, changing the type of tables and chairs and armchairs. The situation is totally different. It's a more and more uh, welcoming, more stimulating. So this is a, a peculiar characteristic of this network that is investing very much in uh, transforming spaces, in lively spaces. <clears throat> we have also interesting collaboration uh, uh, with uh, foundations that uh, supported in this case, for instance, uh, a very huge uh, renovation, building renovation plan, uh, and a, um, we have a kind of distributed library in different parts of the school uh, um, that are arranged on thematic, uh, thematic areas. For instance, uh, close to the dream, uh, you find the um, uh, uh, section, uh, the library section uh, about um, wellness, uh, sports, uh, health, uh, well-being, and so on. Um, close to the heart labs, uh, you find the heart library, and and so on. Uh, in the, in in many, uh, uh, in the, the fact that uh, school, uh, many schools are uh, located in uh, ancient or old buildings. In this case, uh, uh, it's a 150, 60 years old building. Um, it's a, probably a refunctionalization of the space in order to respect uh, to take account of the um, uh, of the laws on cultural heritage protection, but uh, nevertheless, we for instance, we this is the same uh, school. I'm showing showing uh, two pictures of the same school. This is the at uh, Boselli High School in Savona, Liguria. Uh, this is the. Uh, 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 current library uh, for uh, students and teachers uh, and uh, uh, teachings, uh, teacher activities, and this is the historical library in the same building. Uh, and of course, uh, the intervention tried to uh, match both uh, the um, conservation function and also the uh, new. Um, uh, ICT to uh, benefit from uh, uh, those collection. We also have some experiences uh, uh, based on the learning commons uh, principle. Uh, and in South Tyrol, um, a region that invests uh, very much in uh, libraries, museums, uh, cultural uh, infrastructure, 
uh, in the um, um, innovative school libraries uh, campaign, innovative through bibliotheken, uh, the uh, the primary school in Welsberg, Mon Guelfo, was totally um, uh, well, uh, built, uh, um, purpose built, and the um, uh, it, it's not a school library, but it's about schooling at the library. So uh, the um, as you can see, uh, spaces are particularly warm, uh, welcoming and they stimulate uh, autonomy uh, in um, pupils. About the collaboration uh, between public and school libraries, uh, as we already heard from um, Simonetta, uh, there is the project in Trieste, but we have also a very amazing experience uh, of a tight, close combination, uh, collaboration between the uh, public library system and the school libraries uh, in Rome, the BiblioPoint project. Uh, Giovanna Micaglio is the chair, is the responsible for this project. Uh, her contribution is in our um, last year uh, uh, school um, media meeting uh, proceedings. Uh, so I'm not saying very much about that, but the, the important thing is, is that uh, the um, uh, uh, Rome City Council Public Library uh, System uh, Network is uh, trying to um, reach and serve on the privileged area where there are uh, where um, uh, some uh, very active uh, schools um, motivated uh, engaged are available to establish or to develop a joint uh, um, a double library use uh, so uh, we have very uh, interesting outcomes of this uh, experience that is going on uh, has been going on for about 20 years Another uh, long experience, uh, once more, uh, in, in Rome uh, is about uh, a, the 20-year project uh, carried out by um, R2, uh, an associate, a parent association, who works very, very closely uh, with the school. Uh, there is a scientific committee, there is a, also an organizing committee. They uh, provide also uh, the school library services uh, all the year long, also in summer, in summertime, also in the afternoon. So it's a, a, an interesting uh, experience. And I mentioned uh, this experience also in the guidelines, it's in the IFLA school library guidelines. Uh, so it's a tight collaboration with also other associations, other cultural institutions. Uh, networking is a key, a key for, for us, uh, IFLA, IASO, uh, Italian Library Association. So I want to thank once more uh, my colleagues for um, uh, contributing to this uh, amazing book uh, that collects uh, um, experiences and research findings from uh, our field. And I would like to mention at the end, an interesting uh, experience, a project uh, is not by um, uh, the Italian Library Association, although many members like me are uh, actively involved. Uh, Futuro Prossimo, uh, next future or future next, um, uh, um, uh, has, um, has been developed by uh, the Forum del Libro, uh, the book forum, a um, cultural association uh, uh, engaged in reading promotion and, and that promoted also the, the new law uh, about uh, reading promotion and support. Um, and Save the Children. So Forum del Libro and Save the Children join the forces together uh, under the coordination of um, uh, the competent and well experienced uh, colleague uh, researcher um, professor Carla Ida Salviati 
this um, uh, education and training project uh, is interesting in my opinion because it is addressed uh, to uh, any uh, uh, audience interested in uh, reading, reading education, reading promotion. So uh, it's a, it is addressed to uh, librarians, uh, school teachers, school librarians, to parents, uh, to cultural um, um, operators, uh, to, uh, or also to uh, high school students, for instance, who want to play a more active um, role in engaging uh, their colleagues uh, in uh, um, uh, uh, reading, uh, using also new uh, social media. So the uh, education and training course is totally free of charge, is uh, available uh, in order to get the certification uh, until uh, the end of May. Uh, the uh, 31st of May. Uh, after that date, uh, all materials uh, that are available in the Moodle platform will be released for uh, uh, to be shared uh, with anybody. But um, in the a module uh, inside this uh, project is about the school library in this vision. Uh, so I edited a. Um, a manual uh, about that, but there are also many, many other contributions uh, by uh, school librarians, school teachers, public librarians working together to enhance uh, reading, reading literacy in order to uh, prevent um, or to contrast uh, the risk of exclusion of um, um, uh, school instruction uh, dropout and so on. So uh, mm, uh, we have to consider that research and professional findings underline that um, uh, the contribution that functioning school libraries can provide to learning, to the development of students' reading uh, habits, com uh, practices, competencies, uh, media information literacy, digital and global competencies, and the curriculum uh, implementation will contribute to Mm, critical thinking active uh, citizenship. So uh, I think that the uh, uh, the interest, the efforts in activating a functioning school library in every school, uh, allies, uh, beers, uh, partnering, uh, collaborating, networking with the local community and the community at large, uh, also in a, in a virtual or remote mode, has never been necessary. Uh, as today, in order to contrast inequalities and the risk of uh, division, and in order to enhance uh, uh, community inclusion and cohesion. So uh, I'm um, now passing the, uh, the baton to um, um, Bella uh, Comprehensive School. We have uh, th this ses uh, session is about uh, uh, this last part uh, of the uh, the third session is about uh, schooling in the library. So it's not about the school. Uh, it's not more focused on the school library, but about uh, educational. Uh, activities and role of the school library. It's about schooling in a lively way. So we have uh, some short videos that um, uh, uh, lead us, uh, the, the presenters um, at a at primary and uh, middle school um, um, uh, services and activities at the Malanga School, Lib school Media Library. Uh, the video was made by a, a member of the um, a school library uh, standing committee of the Italian Library Association, uh, who is also a very um, competent, talented um, uh, school teacher and also the coordinator, um, the instigator, and then the uh, coordinator 
of the um, school library network in uh, Lucania, Basilicata, in southern Italy. So uh, the, um, the video uh, by Mario Priore uh, can be uh, shared. Uh, it was a, sh a short video, but I think that uh, it provides a very lively uh, example of how uh, pupils are fully engaged uh, in the activities. Uh, they are also engaged, uh, for instance, uh, according to the service design thinking uh, uh, approach, uh, they are fully engaged also in, in organizing uh, authors' uh, talks, uh, authors' meetings, uh, they um, in, um, they write interviews. They prepare the posters. Uh, so the uh, the library is uh, really a in information and cultural lab. And furthermore, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> it's important to also to consider that uh, as in many other. Uh, little towns in in Italy, um, as in Bella, uh, there is no public library. So uh, uh, the school serves also as a, a functions uh, also as a public library. Uh, the the space uh, fully ac accessible uh, is um, large enough, uh, two hundred fifty square meters. Uh, so, um, and the um, collection is, uh, and collections, both uh, print and digital, um, very high quality. So, the, um, uh, uh, the school library uh, plays a, a very important uh, um, proactive <laughs> role, uh, not only in the school, uh, school community, but also in the uh, community large. So uh, now we move back from south to north, northwestern uh, Italy to Turin, Piedmont uh, region. Um, we have two, we, uh, two videos from the same school. The first video is about, uh, provides an overview of the uh, Massimo D'Azeglio uh, Grammar School. Um, story and uh, history and uh, activities and so on and in another short video um, presented by a student Chiara is focusing on the school library Leone Ginsburg um, school library um, please uh... well I actually miss a bit my daily routine friends teachers but most of all my school my name is Beatrice, 
and I go to Massimo Zelio High School. Our school is one of the most famous historical schools in Turin. It was founded in 1831 and it's older than some of our teachers. It's named after a famous writer and patriot, Massimo Zelio. Over the years, it hosted many famous Italian people. We could name, for example, Cesare Pavese, Giulio Naudi, founder of the Homonym Publishing House, and Primo Levi, a Jewish chemist who had the bravery to write about what he had to suffer in Auschwitz once he luckily came back. In front of the school, there are two stumbling stones in memory of those who haven't made it back home. Massimo D'Azeglio High School also hosted the Agnelli family, founder of one of the strongest Italian football teams, Juventus. And there's another football team here in Turin called Torino FC. And football matches between these two teams are very exciting. And here we are in our school. On the ground floor, there's our huge library. I really like to study there. It's a really good and quiet place to study and I always borrow books from it. Now we are in our classes while social distancing. It was a bit uncomfortable, but it was easier to pay attention there rather than at home. Massimo D'Azeglio is a grammar school. Here we study particular subjects like Latin and Ancient Greek, and we learn to read and translate that we are writing you can see here. And look what a big dictionary! Even though it's a grammar school, it allows you to specialize in different detailed paths. Some of us study French, others deal with cultural heritage, and so on. Now let's go downstairs and enter one of our gyms. Here we have a lot of fun playing sports, but most of all, PE teachers teach us body's anatomy. Our school is supplied by several laboratories, and two of them are the physics laboratory and the chemistry one. There's also a particle detector directly linked to the CERN in Geneva. We use it to detect cosmic rays coming from outer space. Our school puts the opportunity at all students' disposal to participate in our football team and to practice different activities such as theater, ensemble, our school band and choir. So after, uh, after this overview um, Massimo D'Azeglio High School, now we are uh, visiting uh, its school library, Leonid Dinsburg uh, School Library. Ciao a tutti, il mio nome è Chiara e oggi vi darò una panoramica della biblioteca del mio liceo. La biblioteca del liceo d'Azeglio è intitolata a Leone Ginsburg, ex allievo del liceo, ebreo e convinto antifascista, morto nel 1944 in carcere a Roma. Il locale è molto ampio e contiene moltissimi libri che spaziano da argomenti classici ad argomenti di narrativa più recente. Inoltre possiede anche libri antichi o molto rari, come ad esempio una copia della prima edizione di Se questo è un uomo di Primo Levi, anche egli ex allievo. La biblioteca, che in origine occupava le aule del pian terreno, oggi si trova in un grande spazio che in origine era la palestra femminile. Accanto alla biblioteca, vera e propria, c'è un'aula provvista di computer e connessioni in internet. Ciò rende ideale l'uso della biblioteca non solo per prendere i libri in prestito, ma anche per studiare e svolgere progetti. So, uh, as you have seen... In this very short video, the Chiara, the um, student of Massimo D'Azeglio High School, um, uh, uh, has guided us uh, inside the, uh, the school library. It's interesting uh, to uh, see how the uh, historical part and the uh, historical collection uh, are um, also uh, lively. Um, and very well uh, preserved, but also uh, used uh, um, for um, information literacy project, uh, history, historical research. So uh, it, it also the archive of the school, of the school uh, is a, the school records mm -hmm. archive is particularly uh, interesting because a, um, it was established uh, uh, 150 years ago. So it, it, 
uh, it, it can be also uh, explored and used in uh, um, some project uh, that, uh, that involve um, um, the students. And it's also an important um, uh, resource uh, for those uh, uh, researcher, uh, academic uh, or scholars uh, who are interested in uh, um, learning more about uh, uh, um, the history of, of schools, education, and so on. So um, um, I'm uh, uh, thanking so much uh, all of our colleagues uh, uh, from the web, the stream yard group, the executive board members, uh, and all the commissions that contributed to uh, this um, um, conference. But uh, I'm uh, and others, uh, the other speakers, of course, uh, are still here to um, um, and, in, and eager to answer uh, to any comments, uh, questions, or um, uh, reflections uh, that would could be uh, exchanged uh, in the uh, YouTube uh, uh, comment area. So I invite uh, those who are um, uh, watching this, uh, who are uh, attending this um, conference. Um, please to uh, don't, don't hesitate to register yourself so we uh, can also uh, uh, go, uh, go back to you uh, also after the conference. Um, so uh, I don't know if we, uh, Beatrice, my colleagues, uh, Beatrice, Simonetta, Maria, those who are still here, I uh, would like to uh, um, say um, to add something uh, to the uh, presentation or some comments and reflect, uh, reflections after this uh, uh, overview of experiences and projects. Can I? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm very grateful, I told you. However, um, I'm also um, very uh, happy because uh, uh, we could uh, show to everybody how many things we can do. There are the problem, there is the problem of the legal statutes of the um, <clears throat> school school in Italy. However, uh, uh, I I can say that we can proud because uh, we can do. We have uh, young uh, young students and scholars, and future scholars like the teacher and other professionists and other scholars and librarians. But we all together, we are a very, um, you know, uh, a strong uh, team, and I'm I'm sure that uh, we uh, we can succeed in doing uh, everything we decided to. Yes, I. <laughs> Thank you so um, much, uh, Maria. Uh, Be uh, Beatrice, would you like to add something, please? Um, 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 it was really nice to see uh, the, the the videos of the of the students um, describing their their institutes and their libraries and their their activities. And yes, I agree with uh, with all of we with all of you when. We say the networking is the best practice that we can do, and uh, knowing what works and what uh, is being has been done and um, has been experimented is actually um, something very useful for other librarians, teachers, educators, and scholars. That's all. <laughs> Thank you so much. I don't know if uh, Simonetta is still uh, here with us. And also Valerie, I would like to invite uh, 
the eFlask libraries uh, section chair uh, to um, comment uh, from a, a personal viewpoint uh, the contributions we try to share this morning. Okay, uh, thanks Risa for this uh, wonderful program. I was glad to attend uh, the, all the presentations and uh, I hope uh, we can find all the presentation online. And uh, uh, do you know if you are going to send us the PowerPoint and some materials? Yes, of course, but uh, I think that will, they will be uh, published first on the um, Italian Library Association uh, School Library Standing Committee webpage and, and then uh, linked to, um, uh, but of course they will be shared both in Italian and in English uh, for those who are not particularly familiar with uh, English, please. Okay. Thank you very much for your great work. Thank you so much. I, uh, I invite uh, um, all of uh, IFLA, IASO, uh, AIB members, and all, all those who are uh, kindly attending, uh, were kindly uh, attending um, this uh, webinar uh, to join us uh, this afternoon. Uh, at 6 p.m. for the round table uh, that uh, where the um, uh, a, a closer uh, and more effective collaboration uh, will be uh, uh, explored. So this is a theme, particularly uh, a topic, particularly uh, important for us, especially in this uh, pandemic time. Uh, in order to, to strengthen uh, our forces our if, and to make our efforts more visible, more effective. Um, and so a, a, it's also a way this uh, um, our motivation in networking is also a way to um, uh, tribute to honor uh, Antonella Bichetti's legacy who uh, um, uh, devoted uh, so much uh, to uh, networking, to close collaboration. So, uh, say, uh, so we are eager also to provide um, uh, uh, deeper contributions uh, for the proceedings, of course. Thank you. And see you this afternoon. So I'm still here, of course. So in case there are some comments in the chat, I'm not seeing uh, the YouTube chat. So in case uh, there are some comments, uh, uh, of course, uh, we uh, can be here for uh, a couple of minutes. What's more? Otherwise, we... Uh, can simply say uh, thank you so much to uh, those who collaborated uh, to uh, this webinar and those who attended it and please let's keep in touch and see you later in the round table of the Italian Library Association Friuli Venezia Giulia uh, section in collaboration with other branches of the uh, Italian Library Association and also to the next uh, uh, second uh, business meeting uh, of the EFLA School Library Standing Committee that will be uh, held uh, on Sunday, uh, the 2nd of May. So, thank you so much. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for contributing, for watching, for helping. <laughs> Thank you.